diverting late night football conversation for prostitutes. How dare you! Chronic back pain sufferers. Oh, done the old back again. And security guards who haven't quite nodded off yet. Wake up! <coughs> the Michaels, Graham and Parry on Talk Sport. For when two mics are better than one. Look at the light! Airtime, paper time, space time or anything. They're just nutters. This is Talk Sport. Welcome to the start of the Two Mics Week. It's time to say a very, very good morning to uh, a rather uh, hot and bothered, I would say, for me as well as for him, uh, Mr Mike Porky Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr Parry. Yes, good morning, Mike. Why are you hot and bothered? Uh, well, I'm hot and bothered partly yeah. because I only just got here, uh, you know, in the nick of time. Yes. And there was a pretty strong chance that but I you might didn't plan your day at all well, did you? Well, I planned it very well, actually, but all the plans went completely and utterly all right. Well, look, if you drive around an old jalopy, it's eventually mm. going to blow up. So no. it blows up on you today I'm coming not, back I'm from not driving, uh, I'm not driving from it around. Dorset. No, I don't drive around an old Old jalopy. I uh, drove around in a very expensive second-hand Land Rover. Oh, I see. It okay. It wasn't. Okay. In fact, the old jalopy. Yeah. Uh, in fact, was the rescuer for mm. me coming up tonight. I came up up in the old jalopy. Okay. Because the Land Rover's on the back of a truck. Uh, exactly. The, the Land Rover, being the very expensive second-hand uh, Land Rover, yeah. is on the back of a truck. Mm. Isn't that a sort of contradiction in terms? Well, cars do break down, as you well know. Do they? Yeah. I've never had a car break down. Have, have you never had a car break down? Well, not Are you for sure. About, not for about thirty years. And you haven't ever seen cars being towed away by people who have found them. Well, I mean, you well, see Porsches, you see Mercedes, well, you, do. you see Land Rovers, you see all sorts of cars You do, being towed but that's around. usually because of the irresponsibility of the driver, no. you know, not knowing how well, to I, control I mean, his I'm, car properly. I, I, I suppose I should have been more, uh, more, more realistic than thinking that I might come in here and get some bleeding sympathy from you. Oh, after now, come spent, on, you know, profanity. Nine you know, hours. This is a family after show, After having you know. spent nine hours getting from yeah. Dorset back to Sussex. Well, I And mean, then having spent a further two and a half hours trying yes, to get in here, yes. thanks to the vagaries of the people that run the road system Well, as I say, you've got to learn how to organise your life properly. I haven't had any problems like that today. I didn't have any problems like that yesterday. Well, you know? I'm very happy for you. I didn't have any problems like that on Saturday, so... Yeah. Do you have any problems getting into the James <laughs> Bond premiere? Um, well, that was a, that was another story, but right. they, the audience won't be interested in that. Yeah, no, I think they'd quite like to know. No, you no, did no, tweet no. out the other day that you were going to explain what happened. I assumed you went. Uh, no, it, uh, the problem was it was the wrong Friday. It's this coming Friday. Oh, so it's this coming Friday? Yes. So how did you get the date wrong? Uh, I don't sure, I'm not sure. And you but, had your uh, shirts boiled and everything for it? Yes, I did, yeah. Oh, disappointing. I, I, was, I was already, but when I double-checked as to the location, the mm. venue, because I wasn't even sure which cinema I was going to, to be honest. Well, you didn't know what town you were going no, to I didn't, last I didn't, time I, I didn't know. And uh, when I double-checked it, it was, in fact, the wrong week. Uh, and, in, and, in fact, funny enough, I first cottoned onto it mm. when I saw an advert, I think it was last Thursday, yeah. full-page advert in one of the national newspapers saying jo- James Bond to be released from Monday. Yes. And I thought, how can that be released from Monday if I'm going to see it tomorrow, Friday? Yes. Well, and they did do preview like, releases, don't they? It was supposed to be a premiere, wasn't it? Uh, well, yeah, it was, but it was a public premiere. It wasn't a press premiere mm. or anything like that. But anyway... So now it's going to be... You're going to see it a week after everybody else has seen Well, it. I've been invited to a viewing at the IMAX tomorrow, which is very near to here, a near viewing. Waterloo Station. Yes. What sort of viewing? Well, a viewing, you know. Well, you mean it's on there? It's on there, yeah. No, yeah. So you haven't been invited to a viewing? Yes, I have. Yeah, I've been invited to go. Well, everybody could go, though. Well, no, I think I was, I, I've been invited, you know, with a special ticket. You know, a special I mean? ticket. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's yeah. a special ticket? Well, you know, like a VIP ticket. A VIP I mean? ticket. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so anybody can get one of these. But I don't think I can make it actually, because funny enough, the final editing of our uh, long-awaited um, DVD. Oh yeah. Is uh, taking place tomorrow morning, uh-huh. which I shall have to attend, yes. and then um, you know, hopefully we'll have some good news on that one later in the week. Absolutely right. Excellent. Yeah. Now, do you want to hear about my tale of woe or not? Well, it'll be very amusing if you'd like to start the explanation. Well, I'm not uh, sure, you know, I, as I was driving in tonight and wondering if I would ever get here, because, yeah. I mean, the number of obstacles that were put in my way were are, quite are, are you sort of jinxed, you and Rhodes, then? Well, I don't know. I mean, I never mm. used to be. I mm. never used to be. And, mm. I mean, I, I very rarely had a car break down on me either, but I was driving back from uh, Dorset, where we had a yes. very pleasant weekend, went down to Corfe Castle, went mm. to Weymouth. Had a funny, funny, very funny thing happen to me in Weymouth, actually. Mm. I, was, I was literally walking the dog on Weymouth Beach, and I was tweeted... Yes. Uh, by a hotel in Weymouth. You are tweeted? How, yeah, I don't know how they knew I was in Weymouth. But right. They tweeted me and said, you know, if you're looking for somewhere to stay in Weymouth, by all means, come and stay with us free of charge. And I went, oh, well, actually, I'm terribly sorry, but thank you. Uh, Why I've would already... they tweet you like that? I don't know. And uh, then they explained it later by saying that I was the biggest thing to hit Weymouth since the Black Death. Well, you were? Mm. What, Mike Graham? Yeah. Of the two mics? That's right. How did they know you were there? I don't know. 
Had you had you tweeted out the only way to wave or something I like had, that? I had, the only thing I tweeted out was that uh, as I passed Gosport mm. in the car, that was yes. another nightmare. It took four and a half hours to get down there. Yeah, was right. it, well, why was that? Was the well, twenty seven very busy? Traffic. Yeah, the entrance. Yeah. It's the worst road in the world. Yeah, it is because it it's literally it's only the worst two, road in the world. It's only two uh, lanes. It should be three. Well, yeah. it should be a massive motorway. Of course, it should take it people down to the west country. Yeah, I mean, but it's one roundabout after another. Yes, and as we passed the Gosport sign, yes, I had somebody take a picture of it out of the car. Excellent. Said I was now entering Porky territory. I didn't see that tweet. No, I didn't know. Well, that was Friday night. What were you doing on Friday night? Friday night. See, I thought you didn't answer it because you were at the James Bond premiere. No, 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 so no. So what I... did you do instead? Well, I was preparing for Saturday when I went to uh, preparing the Preparing for Saturday? Yeah, to the Emirates. What to was watch that Everton. involved? Well, it moles, you know. No bladderation? No, no bladderation at really? all. It, it, it leading a very sober life. Really? But, but any, anyway... Is that why you're looking so miserable? Uh, no, I'm not looking miserable at all. You are looking miserable. Well, it's very warm in this studio. It is very That's warm. That's what I can't get I'm over. I'm not sure you're going to like three hours I, of I, I don't like greenhouse-type conditions, no. and, and it is greenhouse-type conditions in this studio. It is. I mean, apparently, fortunately... Apparently, we have a, an air conditioning breakdown. Yeah, a fault in the air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm starting to wonder whether I've got some kind of you I know, think you have. On, uh, on, uh, on these kind of You uh, get into a car, things. it blows up, right? Well, it didn't blow up. Here's what happened, right? I was driving, it was driving perfectly well. Yes. And it was driving perfectly well all weekend. And as I was coming up on the A31, we'd come through that sort of horrible bit of mot- uh, the sort of the dual carriage rate yes. roundabouts, dual carriage yes. rate roundabouts yes. that comes past Paul, Pool and Bournemouth, right? That's right. Um, and it's a beautiful day down there, mm. by the way, on mm. Sunday. Mm. I mean, it must be one of the most beautiful parts of the world. When it's like that, yeah. So I was oh. looking from Studland over towards, uh, you know, uh, that gorgeous. I know exactly. Part of the world. Sandbanks, sandbanks, and yep. all that. And the yep. sky was blue. The sea was blue. The sun is up. The sky yeah. is blue. It was fantastic. It's beautiful, and so are you. Yeah, go and, on. I was, and you'll know this area, right? Because you go down there quite a bit. Yes. Uh, coming up out of Ringwood, um, and you right, you rise up a hill, uh, sort of over, over the New Forest, basically. Yeah, you, know? you do. And it's very kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's very picturesque. The only, pro- the only problem with that bit of the New Forest mm. is there's no trees in the New Forest. There isn't, is there? No. No, I've no. noticed that. It's more of a moor, in fact. Yeah, the New Forest doesn't have any trees. Yeah. It's, 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 they, they so should they not actually, rename it? They should rename it. They, it's a trade description. have to call yeah. it the New Forest. It's yeah. not a forest. There's no there's no trees in that forest. There can't be a forest. I'll yeah, tell you what on. they could do with is putting a few trees out and getting some decent uh, 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 sort of signals for your mobile as well, because as yes, luck would have it, yes. um, you know, the place that I ended up having to stop the car, mm. could I get a signal? Could no. I get any kind of 3G? Could no. I get anything at all? Absolutely no. not. So, apparently, um, I, I, as I was just overtaking mm. somebody in the dual carriageway, put my foot on the accelerator, and, yes. and it has a sort of a ping sound, you know, like your Mercedes, where there's a warning. Yeah. It just goes ping, and, yeah. and this uh, words came up on the, on the, on the speedometer. Which what did they said, say? It said transmission fault. Oh, dear. Um, only, that means your gearbox uh, is knackered. Well, it doesn't necessarily, actually. Mm-hmm. It says only, uh, you know, limited gears available, basically. Yep. Uh, and then my son told me that at that very moment, the rev counter went absolutely whammo right all the way up to the top. Right. Because I was doing about 50 or 60. It went up into third, just went down into third gear. Yes. And then it started to chug a little bit. Uh, and I was like, well, if I can only drive in third gear at 50 miles an hour, that'll yes. be fine. I'll just drive it home. Yes. And it'll take a bit longer. Yes. But uh, I was being urged by all those in the car mm. that I should mm. pull over and, you know, not actually yeah. stop on the, yeah. on the main road because that would be dangerous. So we found a lay-by, pulled into the lay-by, um, and basically it just, you know, the transmission just wasn't working. And nobody knows for sure yet whether that means the whole thing is blown up or whether it might just be some kind of electrical fault. So where is the, where is the jalopy now? Well, the last time I saw it, it was, on, uh, uh, the, it was being offloaded off the back of one truck in Southampton because mm-hmm. they towed me to Southampton. Because right. the biggest problem, of course, was that you know, I, I got hold of these uh, uh, breakdown people yeah. uh, and they text you and say, oh, yes, we've got your details. Mm. Uh, we'll get in touch yeah. with you shortly. Waited about half an hour. Uh, By the way, is this a breakdown service you subscribe to on an annual basis? Well, basically, well, it's one I get f- free with my bank account. Basically, it's a free oh, really? breakdown service. Yeah, yeah which uh, really yeah. comes through the bank account. Yeah, well, yeah, see, I've got a black that. bank account. I don't know whether you've got one of those. What's black? Uh, black is like higher than gold, platinum, and all that is black. Why? Why? Because yeah. they gave it to me. Why? What do you mean, why? Well, you don't have loads of money. Look at your face. Look, yeah. how, look how upset yeah. you are. I am, yeah. yeah. I am. Well, I'm amazed you haven't got a black I, bank account. Well, I may have. I don't know. No, you haven't. I have. Well, show me the black card, then. Well, I, I've got... You haven't got a black card, have you? I don't know. No, I've you do got, know. I've you got haven't got one. I've got half a dozen bank accounts. Right, well, show well, me. Why have you got half a dozen bank accounts? Because you need... The, that's what you need these days. Well, let's to, see the like black... Run let's, I'll show you my black card. You show me, your, you show me yours. Well, I don't know what a black card is. A black card means that you can spend anything you like. Yeah, but, I mean, what I'm saying is that might be your bank, but my bank doesn't issue black cards. They issue what's called premium cards, oh, yeah. where you can spend anything you like. I mean, for instance... If I wanted to walk into a Maserati sale room yeah. tomorrow yeah. and buy a Maserati yeah. on one of my credit cards, yeah. they would accept it. Yeah. Good. So I bet your oh, black card doesn't do that. Yeah, it does, actually. You no, can buy doesn't. anything you like. No, it doesn't. You can. That's why it's called
Well, you you could maybe your black card could, but when the first repayment came next month, which would you know total about if it was a jet I didn't about so one hundred and twelve thousand pounds a yeah, month I'm or something show you, like that, I'm going to show you my black. You wouldn't card. be able to pay it, would you? I'm eh? going to show you my black card. Yeah. Anyway, I've got yeah. free breakdown service as a result of this, right? Right. Uh, but unfortunately, um, they weren't very efficient because what happens is they mm. then uh, attach themselves to a, a nationwide sort of you know breakdown. You know, nationwide uh, breakdown company, but then they yes. have to use local people, mm. and these local people. So I got a text from the uh, from the breakdown company saying somebody will be with you in a, just under an hour, one twenty-seven. Yes. They broke down about quarter to twelve, and uh, one twenty-seven came and went. They weren't there. What I was getting more and more irate. They finally turned up at ten minutes past three. That's two hours later. Tanks. We spent three hours on the side of the road. With right, two kids, with two who kids, are distressed, with a dog, dog as you know, with, with a, a woman wife, uh, yeah, who wasn't yeah. exactly best pleased. No, no, and, and in a place where I could barely make a telephone call without scrambling up the side of this hill. This is dreadful. You know, and, and shouting down the phone. I'm surprised you're people. still sane, actually. That sort of stuff. I mean, stuff. I literally, as I was saying earlier, yeah. um, at one point, as we then, we then got a, com- a courtesy car, yes. uh, which we got from Southampton, which was a Yaris. Yes. Right, which is about as much, <laughs> of, a, it's about as much of a contrast. Well, for you a, with your size, from a Land Rover Discovery, the mother you of get. your children, yeah. two children in the back with the dog and all the luggage. Yeah. How did you get it all in? We managed to get it all in. Good we had to put the, We had to put the dog in the back seat. Yeah. Right? We so, managed yeah, to get, the Yaris is actually bigger than you think. You think. Yeah. But it was so low down. Mm. Right, uh, uh, we got it to, to within uh, to about what well, should have been half an hour of the house. Mm. Got to uh, just outside of Eastbourne, right? Yes, uh, a place called um, Drusillas, which is a sort of a, a kids' play area where mm. we go quite a lot. And suddenly the traffic came to a complete standstill. It had already come to a standstill in Chichester. My God! Now it comes to a complete standstill. Two Why did fire you do engines. These things? Two fire engines were racing up the other side of the road. Good God! And I thought this is going to oh, this is oh. it. We're going to be here for the night. Uh, so I then took a detour, went down past Beachy Head, and I kid you not, as we were driving yeah. past Beachy Head, mm. I almost thought to myself, you know what, I'm just going to drive That's over. That's right, just drive I'll just over. just drive it, off. Yeah. The day but cannot get any worse. You could, have, you could have at least told the mother of your children and the kids to get out of the car and the dog and then just driven yeah. her car over Yeah, well, the obviously top I wouldn't have wished to do them any harm. But of course, I didn't yeah. think the day could get any worse, but it actually did. And I'll tell you about that a bit later on. Oh, as I, don't well. think we, I don't think you want yeah, to know yeah. about that. So I know you don't no, like think, talking think, about me. I know you'd rather no, no, we talk about you. I know that you'd rather we talk about you. I think you've bored the audience step already. Tonight. You know, Monsieur, tales of cards. Monsieur Parry with no black card. We're going to be talking about my travails. I've got plenty of black cards. Uh, no, you haven't. You've I have. I've just haven't opened the envelopes. Black balls you might have. No, no. This no, is no. talk sport. Transfer fees up. Season tickets up. High prices up. Why the blooming heck are you still up? Do you know what time it is? Topical sport and debate worth staying awake for. The two mics. All night long. On Talk Sport. All night long. I think that's a very appropriate song under the circumstances. So what's the rest of this nightmare story going to tell well, us? Well, the rest then? of the nightmare story yeah. is that it then took about a further, what, three and a half hours to get from Southampton yeah. back to uh, back to Sussex. Oh, really. sorry, I thought we'd got back to Sussex and you got oh. to the play area and then there was another traffic yeah, jam. Yeah, there was, yeah, but it took... Um, what I'm saying yeah. is, is it took... I mean, we yeah. left... Um, uh, where we were near Weymouth at about 10 o'clock in the morning, yes. got to Sussex at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. So 10 hours. Yes, OK. Is that and noise, by the way? Uh, well, the problem is we have uh, what is popularly known in the business as a malfunction of the air conditioning system, <laughs> as which means we're sitting in greenhouse-type conditions, right? Very hot. I always said that the, uh, you know, the greenhouse effect would never take place in this country, but it's now firmly yeah. rooted in this uh, studio. Yeah. It's incredibly unpleasant uh, working conditions, but... Because we owe a duty of service to our millions of listeners, we are going to plough on. Mm. And the noise in the background... But you've ordered for some kind of wind have, machine to be brought, brought I have, wheeled I have. in. This is a vague sort of... But it's too a, noisy. It's a vague... No, it's not noisy. It's I, drowning out your dulcet tones. Oh, in that case, we'll have to switch it off. But, I mean, <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm really saying is that I don't know how we're going to do this because it is incredibly... Uh, difficult to keep your um, equilibrium, I it think is. is the word. It is. And, uh, anyway, and, uh, so you get home. Yeah. You get home, right? And then, and then you know, you had a bit of dinner and all that. No, kind of I stuff. didn't. No, because you, no, you, no, you I didn't have any dinner. Set off for work. No, that's the other thing. I didn't eat anything all day, right? Right, right. Because we didn't have a chance. We didn't have any now, real that, opportunity that is, to stop. That really is a, a red flag day for you, yeah. not to have eaten anything all day. Exactly. What happens when you set off for work this evening then? Well, so what happens was I got home about eight o'clock, ten past eight, unloaded yeah. the car, yeah. got the dog back to normal. Yeah. I mean, poor dog had been basically in a car. For ten hours, uh, but I mean, we managed be to, very agitated. Well, we'd managed to get him out a few mm. times for a little walkabout, yeah, but I mean, yeah. not really anything. I yeah, mean, you sure. couldn't really walk him on the side of the A31. No, you couldn't. No. You know, uh, then well, we you had a lay-by, didn't you? And well, you had it was a, a hill lay-by, to yeah, but it's up. very noisy. 
Yeah, but you were so, scrambling I mean, up this know. hill to use your phone, yeah, so you should have let the a... dog run round the old new forest well, for a bit. Well, I couldn't let him run round. There was a fence there, and I didn't know what was beyond the yes. fence. Whether it was probably... Also, you can't run the risk of the dog freaking out and running onto the carriageway. No, you can't. I mean, that would be true. awful. Yeah. So it was a terrible situation, and I was effing and blinding all over the place down the phone to these people. No, and that's that was a shocking why. way to speak to people. Not it really at all. is. No, Disgraceful. Because, but of course, this is what happens, it's right? It's not in what this we country. do here at all. This is what happens in this country. People go, well, it's not. It's not really. There's nothing really I can do. It's not really my fault. And I'm mm. like, well, I'm sorry it's not your fault, mm. but if you promise me that you're going to be there at 1.27, yeah, why aren't and you then here? I ring you 10 minutes later and yeah. you say, oh, yeah, well, they're going to be there in five minutes, and then yeah. they're not. I said, it's a bit like, yeah. you know, when you try and ring these minicab exactly. companies, exactly. and they say, oh, yeah, he's just around the corner. Yeah. He'll be there any second. Yeah. I can see you've got no interest in any I ha- of this. I have. I've, you I'm have very no interest, interest in any of this. I've just fallen all. asleep at the amount of, uh, you falling know... Falling asleep? No, the amount of uh, woe that you're, you're injecting well, into this programme. I haven't even finished it. By now, you'll have people heading for the, you know, the window in the penthouses, opening them, and standing on the ledge. Well, hopefully not. Anyway, go hopefully on. not. Maybe mm. they'll have some kind of schadenfreude and they'll actually enjoy the fact that my discomfort is causing me so much aggravation. Yes. But anyway, yeah. so uh, finally having got back, I was like, well, I've got to leave now uh, because yeah. my other problem, of course, as you might remember from last week, mm. was that the Mercedes has a warning light that comes on and we weren't sure precisely Sorry, what that meant. So this is the second older jalopy, is this it? This is the older car, yeah. Yes. Uh, and because all... Uh, mm. All last week it was actually fine, but at the weekend it had had this uh, orange light that had come and on. And you hadn't dealt with it? I hadn't had a chance to. That because, chance. you know, we hadn't, had, we hadn't had a chance to do it. Yes. Because we left on Friday mm. straight after school and yes. got back. We thought I thought I might take it in today, actually, but, I mean, of course, there was no opportunity no, to because no, they go back no. to 8 o'clock. My worry about the Mercedes was that, you know, there was a similar kind of fault looming on this car and I could get halfway up to London. Yes. And the car could just conk out. Yes. All right. So, uh, I thought, well, I better not leave too late, just in case there's a problem. Yes. So I had a quick sleep for an hour. Mm. It's the only sleep I've had. Mm. Uh, and, uh, what do you mean, the only sleep you've had? It's the only sleep I had today. Normally yeah, I sleep slept, a little bit You slept last night, though, don't yeah, you? But I, yeah, but we work at night, Mike. I know you don't sleep. No, you don't need to sleep Which, on a Monday. Of course you do. No, I don't. Anyway, yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, but that's yeah. why you don't do lally by about Wednesday. What? And, anyway, you, on, and, yeah. and you also only do half the, half the number of hours that I do. Anyway. Yeah, yeah I know, but the quality is better. Well, I know you like to think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, mm. so I, I, I get up about 9 o'clock. Um, I have a quick cup of tea, say mm. goodbye to the kids. who are mm. still traumatised by mm. this terrible day they've had, right? Yes. Uh, and everyone's just walking around in a state of shock. The yes. dog doesn't know whether he's coming or going. No. And so I get in the car, and everything actually goes well. Up the A21. Everything goes very well, because yep. the morning light didn't come on at all. Right. So I'm thinking, well, maybe the, the, there is Your no fault. changed. Maybe there's no fault. Yes. And the car's going very well, put a bit of music on. Uh, you know, I'm quite enjoying myself. Get mm. all the way up to... with it by. I, I've been going for about an hour. Mm. So I get to uh, 11 o'clock, just about to join the M25, and it says... I mean, by the way, I've already had to take the usual detours because they've shut the roads yes. around, you know, where I live. Yes. So I get to the M25, and suddenly it's starting to down, go down to one lane. Yeah. And I want to go round towards the Dartford Crossing, of right? Of course, yes. And it then says, uh, road ahead closed. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, OK, so what do I do now? So I have to go onto the M25 the wrong way, yes. heading towards Gatwick. Right. Right. So right. You're, you're familiar with this, yes, right? Yes, I'm familiar. For anyone who's not familiar with the M25, it's, it's, I'm, yeah, now yeah. Go, I'm now going you can, clockwise. You can go that way and then come in from the south, of course. Well, I, I could, and I'm thinking to myself, it's 11 o'clock, mm. I've got to be there by about 12. Yeah. Um, you know, should I get off at the M23 and head up through exactly. Croydon? Exactly. But I know that you've told me all these tales of woe about Croydon and Brixton and well, all that. Well, it can be I a thought, problem. I don't really want to do that. Mm. So I thought, I wonder if it's open coming back the other way. Mm. So you have to go for about, I don't know, 10, 15 miles yeah. past the Clackett Lane service. That's right. Down to the A22. Yes. Right? So I, I'm about to come off the A22 thinking, I wonder if this is the best way to go. Then I see the sign that says diversion. Mm. And the diversion is to go back on the M25. Right. Back the other way. Right. So I'm like, well, it must be open. Right? Yeah. So I do that. So yeah. I go round and round about, back the other way. Do you know what they've done? No. They then uh, put it down to two lanes mm. uh, and they have a massive speed camera. It's going off like a blitzkrieg. Yes. Literally getting everyone. Right. Because it goes from 70 down to 40 in a right. space of about 30 yards. But you were smarter than the average bear. I saw it going the other way. So right, I, I didn't see, get, yeah. I don't think I got flashed, right. but I'll find out in due yeah. course. Yeah. Anyway, it turns out they've closed that exit as well for the M25. My so God. it then sends you Ooh. on the M26 which goes down to join the M20. Exactly. Which is the road to Dover. So you're heading back into Kent. So I'm heading back into Kent. My God. So I then think, well, that's not a problem, because obviously when the M26 meets the M20, mm. I'll just go north. Yes. And head left, right? Yes. No, you can't do that, because when the M26 merges with the M20, yeah. you end up only, you can only go south. So you're heading now down so towards Dover, now, folks. It was now half past 11, half Good an God. hour from the time I'm supposed to be here, yeah. and I'm now heading towards Dover. Yeah. And I'm thinking, well, I'm just going to have to wait until I get an exit, yeah. another 10 miles, and then do another U-turn. Is that what you did? And come back up the M20, yeah. 
And then, then did you come back up the M20 how far? Came up the M20 back to the M25. Yeah. Because it was then shut. Yeah. You couldn't go any further on the M20. Yeah. And then by that stage, I, I knew I'd probably be OK. So I managed to, to, to make it in. I mean, it took me about... It, it was about a 30-mile detour. My God. And that's what they were telling you to well, do. Well, you know, these things It's just things unbelievable. Are, but it's a pity you can't handle these things, you know, with Well, more, I can handle them, that's with, why I'm here. With, you know, with more... There were those uh, who said to me that I should probably be so stressed out after a day like that that more, I shouldn't go to work. More preparation. Well, you know, that's what life does. It throws brickbats at you. It and does. You just have to that's get on I with said. it, you know what that's I mean? That's exactly what I said. And if you can't get on with it, I don't know what you're going to do. Yeah. We should be talking about it a bit about the weekend anyway, football, Anyway, I'm terribly you know? sorry to have taken up so much of your very valuable time. Well, I know people are, uh, yeah. wanting, are keen to hear your stories for the weekend. Well, as well, no, not at all. I think they're like, keen for example, to... your trip to the Emirates. Well, my trip to the Emirates was very uh, disastrous. Uh, it was very eventful. I was going to was put it? it that way. Yeah, but I mean, I never seen pretty terrible result though. Well, losing two one to uh, to the team at the top of the Premier League at their home ground, mm-hmm. and, and and actually being the better team for the last twenty minutes of well, the what game. What score you predicted? And, and I predicted two two. So I was very very close to getting the right score, wasn't I? Yeah, we're wrong then. I was very close to getting the right score. I tell you what, old Cloppy, you know, mm. it, do you know what? He's made the same initial mistake as uh, Tim Sherwood. Well, all he's done so far is managed to get one one draw. Well, everybody's played. But didn't you see that when he when they scored their opening goal, he did exactly what I've criticised Tim Sherwood for. He started racing up the line, mm. jumping in the air, punching in the air, yeah. you know, kicking his feet out like he was a, a mid air dancer. Right, well, he was uh, at Anfield, and, uh, wasn't he, for the first goal yeah, league game? Yeah, yeah, sure, but. I said that it was exactly the same with Tim Sherwood. When you start celebrating a one-goal advantage yeah. so early in the game, yeah. you are really, really hanging yourself out to dry. Well, isn't one of the Be- reasons that he's been hired mm-hmm. to kind of to kind of noise up the fans and get them all kind of enthusiastic? Well, that's all very well, but he's noising up the fans only for the game to end in a one-one draw. And I think he looked a bit silly later, yeah. where you know, with, you know, the great grinning, you know, visage of the teeth and the glasses and yeah. the flashing eyes and all that. That's great. If it had been the fourth goal. Yeah. And they would won 4-0. Right. But it wasn't. It was the first goal. They think, drew 1-1. Do you think he's got one of those faces that's only suited for victory? I was thinking about this at the weekend. He, uh, when he doesn't win, I've read some, he, he doesn't I've, look so good. Do you know what I mean? I've read some reports that, you know, this, this great smiling, you know, very amiable sort of guy can change in a flash if yeah. things go wrong. Yeah. And that he can throw a few barbs at journalists who ask the wrong question, sure. all this kind of stuff. I'm sure. you know? well, he, he, so you have to, to be, see that side of him. Well, I'm sure we will see that side of Poor him. Poor old right? Tim as well. What do you mean, poor old Tim? The last poor Tim, Steve. Oh, I knew him well. You didn't know him that well. You called him Steve. Rubbish. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Get a generous helping of the latest odds and tasty tips with Paddy's Punts. Every weekday afternoon from four on Drive with Durham and Goffey on Talk Sport with Paddy Power. You're welcome. With the form on the football. The what a game. The going on the GGs. And they're off. The crack on the cricket. Six. And lashings of Paddy's famous generosity. Ah, oh, come on. Gives a break to me a bit of crack, isn't it? Get your tips while they're Hot with Paddy's Punts. Weekday afternoons from four with Adrian Durham and Darren Goff on Talk Sport with Paddy Power. You're welcome. Hi. Hi, I'm here to trade in my trainers. Trade in your trainers? Yeah, they're really old. Didn't buy them here. Seen better days, to be honest. I wouldn't get too close. I want to put them towards some lovely new ones. Uh, sorry, sir, we don't do that. Really? Vauxhall do? I just gave them my old banger and got £2,000 towards a new one. Think you can't afford a new car? What a load of scrap. On top of all our other great offers, we'll give you £2,000 scrappage for your old one to put towards a brand new Vauxhall. Visit your local retailer or search Vauxhall Scrappage for more information. Trading car registered in your name for at least 90 days. Offer available to individuals and small businesses. UK supplied vehicles only. Exclusions apply. Limited time at participating retailers. Full T's and C's apply. This week, check out Asda's Toy Sale. With over 100 toys up to half price, including My Little Pony, Twilight Sparkle and Rainbow Dash 2-pack, was £40, now £20. And Lego City 3-in-1 Value Pack was £40, now £30. Lots of toys, so many savings. And heaps of fun with the Asda Toy Sale. Available in store and online at george.com. Asda. Save money, live better. Selected stores, lines and availability. Higher price charge, 59 stores. I'm here with Oliver Mangum, Applications Director at Fairfield Control Systems. Oliver, how has hiring apprentices improved your business? Our apprentices have been essential to our business growth. Their knowledge and talent helped to bridge a skills gap. In three years, our company has doubled in size and we have a 95% retention rate and all seven of our apprentices are now permanent members of staff. 
Thousands of companies like Fairfield Control Systems are realizing the value of apprenticeships. With a free recruitment service and the possibility of a grant of at least £1,200, there's never been a better time to hire an apprentice. Find out more at greatbusiness.gov.uk forward slash apprenticeships. Because road conditions change in a second, BMW's intelligent four-wheel drive switches power from rear to front wheels in just one-tenth of a second. From rear to front. From front to rear. From rear to front. Delivering grip that's almost magnetic. X-Drive. Available on models across the range, including sports hatch, saloon, coupe and touring. To find out more, visit your local BMW centre. From the talk of the town to the whisper of the village. Count number four, please. Breaking global sports news and the answers to questions you never even thought to ask. Has anyone got a spoon for my kiwi fruit? The two mics. Just like in that film. On Talk Sport. <laughs> Talk Sport, uh, we are, of course, uh, the two bikes. There will be uh, winners and losers coming up a little bit later on. There will be a podcast coming out. Now, here's something you didn't think you would hear uh, on Twitter uh, from the beginning uh, of this season yes. until now. Uh, this is from Becky in New Zealand, who is, of course, a, a big Chelsea fan. Yes. She says this. As a Chelsea fan, the club is being dragged down by our manager. It is time for a change. Oh, Jose dear. needs to go chumps to chumps. Ooh. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Have you seen the story? In a, I think it's the back page of the Mirror this morning. Yeah. Uh, in which it says the players are confused by Jose's behaviour. Mm. Now, do you remember... I've said, now listen, I haven't heard this nonsense for a long time. They used to always play this because they think I'm in love with Jose Mourinho. Yes. I think Jose is a great manager. I think he's a great guy. I like him being in the Premier League. Yeah. Something's going on. I've been saying for ages, I think he's trying to get the sack. Well, and I'm, I think I'm people not, are starting to believe I'm that. not sure he's trying to get the sack, but there was a report over the weekend that the players now have a nickname for him, which is unheard of for a man of his stature, if you yeah. see what I mean. Yeah. And that when he walks into rooms, the players all now go quiet. Yeah. But when he walked out of the room, this was the canteen at uh, Cobham, and the door closed, he was aware of a burst of laughter. Really? And he's now aware, apparently, that the players have some sort of derogatory nickname for him and he can't find out what it is. And there's nothing worse than ridicule for somebody who's trying to impose some kind of order, right? right? Nothing worse at all. Now, let's talk to Rebecca Lowe, uh, our good friend. We'll find out what she's making of all of this because it's very, very strange indeed. I can't figure it out. Rebecca, very good morning to you. Welcome. Morning, chaps. Morning. Yeah, morning, Now, I read out a tweet there from a Chelsea fan who's been a Chelsea fan all her life. She's not, as some would uh, describe them, a jolly-come-lately Chelsea fan. Mm. Um, It's amazing, isn't it, that Chelsea fans have now got to the stage where they don't actually want Jose Mourinho around anymore? I know. It's bizarre. I mean, listening to what you're saying there, Mike, about, you know, you think maybe he's, he's trying to get the sack. What I just don't understand is why he would want to get the sack. And when you think about that, after... The all the joys of last season and, and how he's spent the last two years telling us how much he loved the British press and how much he loved London and his family loved London and this club is so special to him. What has happened? Mm. Something has happened yeah. that I think none of us know or I agree. none of us know about, but mm. some, someone knows something. And it might but be something, otherwise... it might even be some personal thing that he doesn't want anyone to know yeah. about, but there's, clearly something has changed from the end yeah. of last season to the start of this, don't you think? I totally agree. And when you look at him now, he just looks miserable. And, and I think whether he's asking for the sack or whether he's going to walk out, something's going to give. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not convinced he'll still be there um, for the Liverpool game at the end of this, you know, this weekend, especially if he gets the stadium ban as well now. Mm. So I, think, I, just, I just think the whole thing is kind of a little bit sad from his perspective um, because he's, to go from such a hero to such zero in such a short amount of time is, is bizarre and mm. sort of inexplicable. Um, but at the same time, we're all kind of fascinated by it. Yeah, I, I think it's a very difficult situation for Mr. Abramovich, the owner of Chelsea, because there was such a fanfare in bringing Jose back, and Jose mm. made his own fanfare. I want to go where I'm loved and all this. And if he wants to go where mm. he's loved and then suddenly he becomes the unloved and he's, uh, he's booted out the door, that's a humiliation as much for Mr. Abramovich as it is for Jose Mourinho. I think Mr. Abramovich is in a dilemma, and actually you read conflicting accounts in the, in, in, in the British press here, uh, Rebecca. One is saying... No, Abramovich says Jose is safe. Another one says Jose's got two days to go. You know, they've got a League Cup tie uh, this week, haven't they? Yeah, they have, yeah. Is it Sheffield Wednesday? No, that's Arsenal Stoke, in Sheffield Wednesday. Stoke. Sorry, yeah, Stoke, Stoke, that's yeah. right, Stoke. Yeah, thank you. And um, and you don't know which one to believe, to be honest, because everybody is trying to find the source of, of what you've just uh, alluded to. What is Jose's problem? Is it just third-seasonitis? Well, that- 
Yeah, I, I, absolutely, Mike. And the, the thing is, I'm just not sure anyone does know because I just don't think Roman Abramovich tells enough people for there to have been enough people to know the real truth. And he just, he just has never struck me as that kind of person. Mm. Um, having having seen him around at Stamford Bridge and him just being like, very silent, he's never done an interview, as we know. I just can't believe he talks enough for really any of us to know the real truth. But there's always that, always that thing, isn't there, about never going back. And mm. yes, he won the league and he won the League Cup, but I just wonder what's so, what's so sad and so disappointing for, for Chelsea fans and for Roman Abramovich is this great hero that has done so much for their club is yeah. now tainted. And, it, and, and you know, with the problem with, with going back is that you do run the risk of, of tainting your own legacy, and, and that's what's happening right now. And mm. that is what's happening right mm. now. And in various other places where he's been, where things have gone wrong, and people have said, you know, that, that Jose Mourinho's sort of MO, if you like, is that it always goes wrong. It's never gone quite as wrong as this in terms of the results and in terms of, the, uh, the, the you know, where they are mm. in the league table and their start and all that. No, this is, this is dreadful. I mean, I, 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 every time we show the league table at work, you know, on air, I just, I can't get over the fact they're 15th. And they were 16th mm. at the beginning of last weekend. They're yeah. now 15th. Right. You know, and the problem is, Mike, as well, that not only has it never been this bad, but he's never, he, he, he therefore has never had the experience of getting out of this. He, he doesn't know how to do this. Mm. I mean, this is a Sam Allardyce kind of situation, not a Jose Mourinho yeah. situation. Yeah. Although, and and, and but, what about the weekend's <laughs> antics? I mean, you know, there is a part of me that mm. thinks it's all kind of stunted up. You know, he could have quite easily not got himself sent off. He could have quite easily, you know, stayed away from all of that. But instead he chose to, mm. to make a meal of it. I know. And there's this whole vendetta and conspiracy and all that, which is complete and utter rubbish. But I think the timing of what happened towards the end of that first half with the Fabregas goal that probably should have been given and wasn't, and yeah. then the sending off. He just mm. he got himself into a tailspin, plus the fact that his assistant manager had been sent from the, um, from the dugout as well. Mm. Um, Laro, I think his name is. And, and, you know, you just you, you knew. You knew that when he walked down that tunnel, something was going to happen. There was, there was no way he would have just walked straight to the dressing room and left it alone. No way. Mm. And also, that picture, you know, although uh, the picture of him standing at the back of the director's yeah. box, you know, when everybody in there was cheering. Now, to some, you'd say that's a picture of great irony, if you see what I mean. You know, the, the most powerful man, really, in, in, in British football one moment is humbled to becoming, a, you know, a spectator looking on in another. But actually, that was a very humiliating picture. That, that, that showed him reduced and stripped of any authority... Uh, across a football match where his team was struggling. Mm. And that, that was a very... To me, that, that will have been something that Mr Abramovich will have taken very, very badly, that anything that Mr Abramovich controls or represents should face humiliation like that, because that was humiliating. I absolutely agree. I think one of the things that Abramovich should do, though, mm. um, who am I to tell him, but I think that he should go and talk to the players, because whilst the story you were saying about they have a nickname for him and yep. they burst into out laughing when he walked out of the canteen. Mm. At the same time, when you looked at the performance, especially at the beginning of the second half, when they went down to 10 men, and they really rallied and got a goal back with Cahill, that wasn't the performance of a team that it wasn't having their manager, he's lost a dressing room and all of that mm. kind of stuff. So mm. I just wonder, like you said, Mike Graham, I wonder whether this is some sort of personal situation because it's too weird. The players still seem, they may be slightly disenchanted, but they don't seem to have, have completely broken ranks. There doesn't seem to be a rebellion yet. So I feel that Abramovich needs to sort of, I, and I'm hoping he does, go and talk to the likes of John Terry and find out what on earth is going on. Yeah, but, what, you see, yeah, but, but Rebecca, what could it be? I mean, if it had been a death in the family, which, thank God, it isn't, because we'd have known about it, because, you know, he, he's, yeah. he's a very famous man. Well, it could be any number of things. Well, well uh, OK. That he so doesn't want us to know about. Could, could it be a domestic situation? Well, it could, it could be. be. his marriage is falling apart. It could be apart. something to do I mean, with and, one and, of his and, children. And, and, and I mean, way, it could be something to do with well, one of his but, kids. But it's, it wicked, be it's wicked to speculate on all of this, because, because you know, well, that's, no, that's delving into a man's no, personal life. I'm just saying I think it's more than likely that there's something like that going on, because there's no other explanation. Rebecca, what did you think of the picture of Jose Mourinho going to that event where he wore a dinner jacket? and, you know, black tie, with his daughter standing there in very <laughs> revealing clothes next to her father. I know, but, but I, I mean, I ha you're right, Mike. I mean, I, I turned 35 next month and I looked at that and thought, yeah. my God, I feel old because I would I just couldn't allow my daughter of, what is she, 18 or whatever she is, maybe younger, yeah. to wear that. But 
I just wonder whether I'm a bit, you know, maybe times have changed. Maybe that's okay. I don't know. I yeah. It definitely was a, was a picture that I was a bit, I balked at slightly. But, yeah. you know, well, I don't think it's his daughter's really dress that's upsetting him. Well, I mean, that's that's what all, all I'm saying is, does that represent some sort of, I don't know, some sort of situation within his family, you know, where, well, where his wife I, has said, I want my daughter to dress like that, and he might not have wanted her to, I don't know. I, don't know. No, I think it's a bit deeper than that. I think if it is anything, I think it will be something serious. I don't think it's, it's I can see what you're saying, but I don't mm. think it's, it's it's anything like that. But, I mean, can you honestly say, I mean, I was quite shocked when you said that, Rebecca, that he might not even be there uh, for the weekend. Well, I, I'm only saying that because, I mean, obviously no-one's heard from him. Mm. We've got the new FA charge today, yet another FA charge, and now there's there's possibility that because of the suspended stadium ban from the last FA charge, if what he said to John Moss is as it's being reported in, I think, the back of the mail tomorrow, today, um, in which he used certain type of language, yep. he may well find himself having to serve that stadium ban. Now, if he's not allowed to be at the ground for the game against Liverpool, I mean, it just becomes, not untenable, but it becomes even more nightmarish. And this, at some point, this spiral of has to, has to stop. So yeah. that I, just, I just wonder, I don't know, but just to go back to what you were saying about what the situation and what the problem is, mm. I think it's a, it's a, and maybe it will be something that comes out, but it's a lesson to all of us that we think we know all of these people. We haven't got a first idea what's going on in Joseph mm. Mourinho's life. Mm. And like you say, it could be anything. And, you know, there's absolutely nothing that we should be speculating about because if, if it turns out to be something major that we don't know, um, then it'll explain everything. Yeah. So I think, um, but these things always come out. So well, I'm how sure how do we know we're not all getting too deeply here into the psychosis of Jose Mourinho. It may just be he's having a very poor season as a manager that, yep. you know, he's made a few yeah, bad decisions. Why, why suddenly now? That, that he's unhappy with the uh, the balance of his relationship with the rest of the club. He's not as powerful now as he was when he was there last time. He lost Peter Cech over the uh, the summer and that would be riling him because Arsenal are now top of the table and that's getting getting his goat up. So it could just be that he's having a poor season. We all have poor, poor it, seasons. Yeah. It could be, but you, no one goes from where he's been to where he is that quickly. You don't go from five months ago, or when, when mm. it all started in August, it was three months before he won two cups. And, and Petr Cech, he allowed to go. I mean, and you're right, he, you know, people do make mistakes, and Kevin De Bruyne is looking like a mistake, and Juan Mata's looking like a mistake, letting all these kind of players go. And now it feels like Eden Hazard's mm. going to be leaving the club at some point because they keep falling out as well. So yeah. you're, you're right, he, there are things that could be irking him. But I still don't think that's enough of a reason for the for the fall of. of I mean, he has fallen. And also, and also, don't forget, right the top. don't forget as well, Rebecca. This is a guy who supposedly is one of the great coaches of all time. Mm. The fact that yeah. he can't seem to get the team to come back from yeah. uh, being a goal down against uh, one one team or another, or or have a lead that, that they then lose, or to be incapable of putting a defensive uh, organisation together, it does beggars belief. I can't believe that he's somehow lost the ability to do that. No, I. I, I couldn't agree more you certainly don't do that overnight you absolutely don't and it's not one player two players three it's the entire team yeah. and it, that's what's so bizarre it's almost like a kind of a, 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 an illness is spread amongst the team that they've all caught mm, it yeah. because mm. none of them are looking any good no exactly finally one quick word about tim sherwood will he get back into the premier league yeah. management business anytime soon oh uh, I, I wish he would i wish he could i don't think he will i mean i think it's proven for years now that the only way that british managers you know with the odd exception like sherwood at spurs um get a job in the premier league is by taking a club up so i think it's more likely he'll get a, a good job in the in the championship but what a shame i mean i th- i just think that was the, the, the worst decision for a long time i you know i really do that club really? is just so bad yeah bad decision to bad decision the guy's been there five months he yeah. saves them from relegation mike he takes them to the fa cup final he hits his first flip and they fire him yeah, I, just, no, I just don't understand i agree don't with understand. a bit of that i agree with a bit of that definitely very sensible yeah. rebecca thank you very much yeah. as ever for, uh, for spending some time with us mm-hmm. um i'm amazed that uh, that rebecca would say that because i don't think old steve um, was up to the job he well, just clearly I, wasn't doing I think, anything for i him. think she's right I think he had so little time to prove himself and he lost three key plays mm. in the summer right and all of a sudden you know he's expected to bring in results he doesn't oh i i i, I have some sympathy with him you definitely. got more sympathy for him you got for me yeah i have yeah a lot more oh, yeah, a, lot, a lot more Absolutely yeah yeah 
you're, you're the architect of your own doom, driving around in old jalopies at breakdown and then shouting and swearing down the line at some poor breakdown man who can't get I his wasn't shouting at the breakdown man, I was talking at the man that was organising the well, breakdown. Well, that's even worse. No, it's not. It's even worse. Well, they managed to sort it out for me in the end. Because that guy we didn't have any uh... control over the situation at all. Yeah, well, that's the trouble mm. in this country. Nobody's to blame for anything. Nobody has any control yeah. over anything. You're all just supposed to sit there and take it. Well, I've had enough, and I'm not cast coming out. There'll be winners and losers coming out as well. That's yep. uh, a very famous Beatles song we'll talk about in it a is, second. I'm yeah. getting a lot of sympathy here on the old uh, tweet. Well, I you don't say. deserve much, uh, in my one, view. Uh, from Masher. who yes. says, with friends, with friends like Porky, yeah. uh, who needs enemies? Oh, Masher. Uh, well, I mean, that's a name that inspires, you know, a great deal of sort of confidence and... You well, look it's at, a nickname. You know, you know, you, a nickname. you think of a, you know, think of the image of a man called Masher and you think of the Bash Street kids, really, don't you? A bloke well, with a crumpled it's face. A, it's just a Twitter nickname. Right? I don't yeah. see why you should attack him. Yeah, I'm not attacking him. No, I'm attacking him. Call himself what he likes. Bill says this, horrific car story, MG. As per usual, Porky's Christian values of sympathy go out the window. Hashtag ignoramus. Uh, And here's one that says, Porky's compassion made me almost drive off the road. Really? Yeah, Yeah. well, you know, uh, you've got to organise your life properly. I mean, did I go around seeking all this sort of sympathy when my tyre blew up last week? No, I didn't. In fact, you took more uh, more time than I took to tell a much longer story. No, 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 no. About something which was... But you said it was the day from hell. I just got on with it. You said it was the day from hell. I dealt with it. And it was not the day from hell. I looked hell in the face. Because I've just had the day from hell. I looked hell in the face and hell retreated, put it that way. Hey, by the way, talking about faces and retreat and all that, you wait until Porky Vision this week. Why? Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It's another doctor show. Oh, it's, it's another. Is it good? I'm, t- oh, I'm telling you, I saw it last Why night. Why are they retreading all this stuff, though? I see they're doing well, a new Frankenstein show as well. Are well. they doing a Frankenstein? Yeah. That's great. Well, the point is, there's a big row now because it went out at 6 30 on Sunday. Right. And, it, and, and now it's, oh, you know, the watershed and all this. Oh, it's what, frightening it? to children. Oh, right. Oh, it's terrifying, yeah. But it's, you know what? It's got one of those scenes in it, Mike, which I've always dreamed of yeah. being in myself. He's got these superpowers, you know, and he's in a boozer and he just drinks what he wants, grabs any wench she wants. Yeah. And when anybody objects, he just punches them in the face and knocks right. them through the window. Right. And I think that's a great um, position of strength to be in, in uh, you know, in, in, in a situation like that. Mm. He's fearless to everybody. Listen, do you know why we played that Lennon why song? Why did we play that Lennon song? Well, you won't believe it, but the he co-wrote that song with Paul McCartney mm. and uh, two other songs, I Want to Hold Your Hand, you know, Oh, please, tell me something, bum, 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 bum. and, uh, of course, Please Please Me, right? Yes. Now, they were all written with Paul McCartney uh, on a guitar, which he had acquired from Brian Epstein. Right. Brian Epstein it was a Gibson, right? Was it, it a Gibson? Yeah, 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 apparently. I thought Gibsons were uh, electric guitars, but this this wasn't. This was an acoustic guitar. It's called a Gibson J-160E. Mm. Uh, uh, the Gibson was bought in 1969 for... Uh, no, hang on, hang on, sorry. It was... Uh, no, it's now fallen into the hands of some guy it, who it, wants it, it to has. sell it, right? It has, but uh, it was bought for him by Brian Epstein, the former manager, you know, as a, from, from a, uh, a music shop in Liverpool. Yeah. Now, what's happened is this guitar disappeared after John had moved to America. Mm. It has now been found in a garage in San Diego by a builder called John McCaw. Oh, yeah. He contacted Yoko Ono, in all honesty, after proving that the guitar... Used to belong to John Lennon. I wonder how he knew that, though. Why I have he, no how idea. Would he, how would you suddenly find I, a guitar I, and go, I'm, well, I'm, 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 I maybe recognised it? It could be one of these things where somebody. Have you heard this old story about mm. a bloke who found um, a motorbike in his, uh, in his old shed? And it was a motorbike it, that was given to James Dean by Elvis Presley, mm. and there was a plaque on it which said to, uh, to Elvis Presley from James Dean. Yeah. It's an apocryphal story, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but it you know, does the rounds. Well, this guy might have been given this and said, this is John Lennon's guitar. Anyway, he contacts Yoko Ono. She says, look, as far as I'm concerned, you've acquired it, it's fine. He's now put it up for auction. Mm. It's expected to sell for $800,000. Because this, this, this is the specific guitar that he wrote some of these songs on. It's one of the most valuable guitars in the world. Brian Epstein, the Beatles manager, paid £161, right? Really? For the guitar, right. and one like it for George Harrison at Liverpool's Rushworth's Music Shop right. in 1962, which wow. I think is in a road called Whitechapel I in, suppose in 161 quid in those days is not cheap, though, is it? Yeah, I suppose it wasn't, but I mean... But anyway, it, it is an acoustic guitar, it is a Gibson. It followed... Uh, so, sorry, the Gibson disappeared following a gig at the Astoria in Finsbury Park, North London, in December 1963. Yeah. Its fate remained a mystery until Mr McCall saw an article in a guitar magazine last year about Harrison's Gibson, and he was struck by the similarity to the instrument he'd acquired. Right. He then bought... He, Mr McCaw had bought his Gibson in 1969 for $175. Right. That's 175 Wow. That's about £110. Yeah. 
uh, from a friend who said he'd purchased it at a local guitar shop two years earlier. I bet the friend's steaming now. He contacted Andy Buick, author of Beatles Gear, Mm. who authenticated the Gibson as Lennon's. It was at this point that I realised I can't keep the guitar, Mr McCaw told Guitar World magazine. It's too big for me. Went to Yoko Ono and she said he could. And how much is he thinking going to get for it? Eight hundred thousand dollars. Goodness gracious! The me. mystery as to how the guitar crossed the Atlantic mm. remains unsolved, and to avoid a dispute over ownership, Mr. McCaw agreed that Lennon's widow should receive half of the proceeds of the sale, mm. which will go to her charitable foundation. The guitar will be sold at auctions in Beverly Hills on November the seventh. Wow. I mean, amazing so he'll make story. about roughly half but, a million dollars out of it. Yeah, he will. Yeah, which is yeah. not bad. Is yeah, it? yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. presumably they could check back with all the mm. sort of archive footage and archive sort of uh, photographs yeah. of, the, of the Beatles coming to America. And that's probably how it got over there. Well, Presumably listen, he brought it with him. I've got a picture of it there. See yeah. that? And do you remember when we were kids and Lennon played that guitar? Yeah. You always felt it was too big for him. Yeah. And, and he slung and it's it. Like, it's sort of too high it, up. It, exactly. Yeah. He slung it round his neck, almost mm. under his chin. Yeah, do you remember? Yeah. Right. And that's that's the guitar in mm. question. So, wow. you know, it's amazing. What an amazing stuff, story. Isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely quite amazing. amazing story. Quite now, amazing. I know you weren't able to make it to this James Bond yes. premiere that wasn't the other night. But yeah. Do you remember the boy from James Bond Radio? Uh, that we yes, of to. course I do. Well, he's been to see the movie Excellent. now. Excellent. And we're going to get him on coming up in the next uh, in the next hour. Oh, because, that'll be brilliant. Good. Uh, he was uh, going he to give us a call after he, he came is. out. And, the, he just, and he just has. Lovely. That's so brilliant. We're to, so we're going to find out from him now. Now, I'm going to ask him a big question. Sorry, Mike, to interrupt there. Money Penny in this film yeah. is the same girl who shot That's right. James Bond. Yeah. On the roof of the train yeah. in the last film. Yeah, because I remember when the trailer it reveals that that's so, what she has become. So hang on, has she now been demoted then from being an, an in the field agent yeah. to Miss Moneypenny, who's basically a secretary? Well, she's not necessarily a secretary. She is. She's, she's working for the top man. Right? She's always been a secretary, hasn't she, Moneypenny? No, well, with, with well, dreams, in, the old, in the older movies, with yeah. dreams of being romanced yeah, by yeah. James but Bond. But that's in the older movies. What they've obviously well, done now is they've they've turned that particular. Well, somebody position needs around. to explain that. Because, well, they, well, well, he can probably explain. I it, mean, you I mean, know, I'll, if, I'll give it a go if. You like. If we said to a couple of our, you know, uh, personal assistants and mm. secretaries here at Talk Sport, yeah. oh, get out in the field, will you? G- uh, get a machine gun. Yeah. Get on uh, on a, a Land Rover overlooking a ravine where a train's coming through and just pick off a couple of people standing yeah. on the top of the carriage. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't think they'd be too happy to then be told but they're think, reverting think, back to typing duty. I, th- I think you're being too typecast here. I think you're, no, assuming, no, I'm not. No, you're assuming that this woman, because... She yeah. was out in the field, cannot then get a desk job. She's got a desk job, right? Yeah. Now, she's called Money Penny. That does not mean that she is necessarily a secretary, because they've rewritten no, the No, but whole... historically, Money Penny well, always yes, has been just course, a secretary. Of course, but I don't think that's the way it's going to pan out. Uh, I don't want to give too much well, away. Well, you know... But I can't imagine mm. that she will be sitting there sort of dreaming, uh, as some of the movies have shown in the past, yes. of her liaisons uh, of, of, of a dangerous nature with James Bond. Well, I think she probably will. But anyway, we'll find out all, won't we, from our pal who's been out to see the show today. Tonight, he's going to give us a call in uh, in about ten minutes. Yeah, well, something like that. Yes, yeah. Alonte. Absolutely I like right. it. I like now, it. Let me read you a few more uh, tweets and texts. Okay, uh, this is one from Bob in Sheffield. Yes, he's Bob. Texted into eight ten eighty nine. What a wonderful Samaritan Bob. Porky would be. Mm. He is such a good listener. Yes, well, of course I am. I, I like helping people who are in uh, distress, but I, I have little sympathy for those uh, who get themselves into distress. But I've got a great story to tell you tonight about... Remember Sam Fox, the page three lady? Yeah, I do, yeah. I mean, a wonderful, beautiful um, first-ever page three girl. <laughs> she got booted off a jet um, because... You always love these stories of people misbehaving, <laughs> no, no, don't you? I'll tell you the full story All later, right. but she got booted off a jet for something which you would accuse me of. Oh, yeah. She was in All the right, queue. Well, don't tell us. She was in don't the tell queue. us. No, I've got to tell you the punchline. Right. I'll tell you the story. She's in the queue to get on the jet when she said to somebody who was an official of the airline, I shouldn't have to queue with people like this. <laughs> That's exactly what you would say. Now, how about this one uh, from yeah. uh, Ben, who says, Dear yeah. MG, how uproariously funny is here Porky mm. firstly slate you for not being able to yes. organise your life yes. just because you had a problem with the car. Mm. And then, seconds later, he admits to not having gone to the cinema because he got the date wrong. Yeah, well, that's, you know... That's... Great organised life you got there, Porky. Well, that wasn't my fault. That was somebody else's fault for mm. mistelling me. You yeah, know? right. OK. But this is the way things happen, I'm afraid, round right. here. Colin Murray. Weekday mornings from 10 on Talk Sport with Wix. Every weekday morning, get opinionated comment. So excited, only three Leeds United managers until Christmas. Exclusive interviews. Jimmy Carrigan. Well, I had him by the throat, never mind shouting at yeah. An unmissable debate. You've backed yourself into a wall now, Carl, if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> From the biggest names in sports broadcasting every day. As always, you take this show on to a new level. There ain't no listeners like the Talk Sport listeners. Colin Murray. Weekday mornings from 10 on Talk Sport with Wix. Let's do it right. This is the unique go kart feeling of a turbocharged Mini Cooper five door hatch. And this. 
is how it feels knowing that you got it for just £189 a month plus initial rental. Book a test drive at your nearest mini centre or mini.co.uk forward slash turbo. 48-month hire agreement from Mini Financial Services, £2,899 initial rental. Subject to status, guarantees may be required. Available for new vehicles ordered by 31st of December and registered by 31st of March. Participating retailers only. Mileage and other conditions apply when you return the vehicle. Visit mini.co.uk forward slash turbo. Do you or does someone you know have a long-term health condition? Coughs and colds on top of an existing condition can easily develop into something more serious and cause complications. But you can protect yourself this winter. If you notice the early signs of a cough or cold, then you should talk to a pharmacist to get the advice you need and help make sure it doesn't become more serious. NHS, we're here to help you stay well this winter. Because road conditions change in a second, BMW's intelligent four-wheel drive switches power from rear to front wheels in just one-tenth of a second. From rear to front, from front, to rear, from rear, to front, delivering grip that's almost magnetic. X-Drive, available on models across the range, including sports hatch, saloon, coupe and touring. To find out more, visit your local BMW centre. When you need all the latest form and odds on all the day's sporting action, and you need it fast, you need the Coral Daily Download. Get all the latest news and great offers on all the big games and all the biggest race meetings in one essential package. Delivered to your ears at the speed of sound. Don't miss the Coral Daily Download every morning on the Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast from 6 on Talk Sport with Coral. Your best bet for breakfast. This is Talk Sport. We are, of course, the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out. I've had a bit of um, ribbing, uh, shall we say. Yes. No sympathy whatsoever uh, from a couple because of people. Because of the jalopy. Uh, on, uh, on Twitter, particularly from the north of England. How yes. about this one from Steve, mm. who's a Newcastle fan uh, in Darlington. Now, I know Steve's probably upset because mm. yet another uh, Sunderland victory has robbed him of any kind of chance of posting yes. uh, for another year mm. uh, because of that uh, unfortunate episode. He says this. Evening, Mike. He says, I really sympathise with MG and his day from hell. Really have to say, though, lads, hardly riveting stuff for us northerners who have no idea what on earth with regards to these alien exactly. places and roads down south. Exactly. Sort it out. I mean, excuse me, yeah. it's a very small country, right, we live in. Yeah. If somebody had said to me, oh, I had a problem on the A1M, or mm. I had a problem on the M62, or I had a problem, you know, driving yeah. up the M6 through, yeah. uh, you know, through Penrith and all we that. We would know. We would know. We would know. Why is Steve in Darlington now not got any idea well, what the M25 is? I or think, the M20? Have you I, ever been to Dover? No, I think we're men of the world. Yeah, I, I think, think so. you'll find we're men of the world. Simon, okay? Simon in Ipswich obviously needs to wash his ears out because he's not listened properly. He says, Graham, you oath, I think he means oath, mm. if you had followed the M20 all the way, you would have come out at Junction 3 on the M25. Yeah. Hashtag no sympathy. Well, that's exactly what I did do. Yeah. But I had to go down the M20 the wrong way before I could come back yeah. up it. But you, you've been awfully aggressive to the audience, right? They're only trying not to help. All. No, and it, I'm taking some brick bats from them. Here's, I'm not uh, it. here's a question raised by Matthews, a West Ham fan. It's yeah. a very good one. Yeah. So old G- MG claims to have a black card, does he, and says he could buy anything on that black card. Yeah. And then he drives around in two old bangers. Yeah. Why doesn't he use his black car to buy a new car? Well, I don't want a new What's car. What's the answer to that? I don't want a new car. Why? Because you like because cars that I break down? A, no, I think it's a waste of money. Because as soon as you well, buy a well, new oh, car... Oh, it's a waste of money to yeah. ensure that you don't sit in a lay-by no. for four or five oh, hours with two by, screaming oh, children do you think by, and a dog no. that's going mad. Do you think by buying a new car that you can avoid breaking down? Of course. Rubbish. No, absolutely rubbish. I've never had a new okay, car right, on right. me break down. Well, you may not have had, but plenty yeah. of people have. I know loads of people who bought a new car, uh, and within a few months, it's broken down several times. I, I mean, you know, know unfortunately, it's a bit of a lottery when it comes to cars, and that that is a fact of life. And it, and as far as I'm, one of the reasons I don't buy a new car. Right? If you buy a car as mm. you're going to do mm. for forty three thousand, how's, yes. how's that coming along, by the way? Uh, that's coming along very well, thank you. When are you getting delivery of it? Uh, December the December. F- I think I thought it you is. Getting it in September. No, November the twelfth was the original date, right. but because it's and been custom it, made, it's going to take them three weeks. Custom made? Well, yes. they have to shorten the, the seats and everything. No, no, they, 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 no, no. They just put some special features in to like make what? the well, like a twelve-speaker um, stereo system inside. <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. What's your problem Why with that? Why do you want a twelve-speaker stereo system? Because it's better sound quality. Oh yeah. Uh, bigger wheels, all this kind of stuff. You know what I bigger mean? Bigger wheels. Yeah, bigger wheels. Yeah. Why? Uh, and
and um, an increased number of uh, those beeper things, right. you know, in the back. Well, when you spend your 43 yeah. grand or whatever yeah. it is you're going to buy it for, right? Yes. As soon as you've bought it and mm. driven it off the forecourt, mm. it's going to be worth about 26. That doesn't bother me because, well, you know... it's worth nothing. I mean, you lose half the no, value no, of it as no, soon no. as you bought it. No, no, no. No, no. In uh, in two years' time, when I change it for another one, it'll have been great value. No, I mean, well, I'll buy it off you in two years' time for about 10 grand. Maybe. I'll sell it to you. And that'll mean we've lost 33,000. Uh, no, That's it why won't. I don't buy a new car. No, it won't. It won't. It will. I think we should talk to our next guest. I think we should. To Mr Tom Sears, who we spoke to from James Bond Radio yes. last week, very kindly, uh, was giving us the lowdown on what he thought the new Spectre mm. movie was like. He's now seen the new Spectre movie, so we're going to find out from Tom precisely what it was like. Tom, a very good morning to you. Hello, fellas. How's it going? Yeah, very, Tom. Very, very well. well indeed. Now, I, if, I, if I recall correctly, you were telling us that you, you'd managed to get snares some tickets for the premiere last night, but you were then also yeah. going to yet another screening at 11.30, which I presume has just Absolutely. finished. Absolutely. So you've now, well, seen, you've now seen it twice. Not quite. So basically, we, we got out too late to actually make it over to the Leicester Square by version, but we are actually waiting outside because there's a bunch of about 30 to 40 of our listeners inside the Odeon Leicester Square right now. They're about to come out any minute now, so we're waiting outside for them to see oh, what okay. they call. So, so as, as, as your first sort of premiere mm-hmm. experience, how was it? Where were you sitting? Were you in Siberia it, or were you near anyone? It, <laughs> it was amazing. So we did the whole red, car- red carpet walk down, surrounded by all the stars. We got our photo taken with Barbara Broccoli. Uh, we, we got a photo taken with Stephanie Sigman, who's one of the new Bond girls in the pre-title sequence. Uh, we saw Mr. White, who you'll remember from Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. Oh, we yes. got a photo with him. We saw we saw them all. We were like feet away from Daniel, but uh, he had too many bodyguards, so we couldn't uh, we couldn't hug him sadly. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it was amazing. But in terms of our seats, we we were they weren't the best seats in the world. They were they were right down the front, mm. but they were on the kind of the side, so we were looking at quite a sharp angle. But it was it was definitely watchable. It was great. It was a good uh, angle. Okay. Good. And in the pantheon of Bond films, a what would you give it marks out of ten, Tom? And where would you rate it in the league table of Bond films? Right. I'm not ready to do that, right, because it takes a long time to actually, like, let it breathe a little bit, let it settle right. before I'm willing to do this. But what I will say is this. Now, I'm someone who obsesses over minutiae. Mm-hmm. I watch a lot of Bond. I talk about it with my co-host, Chris, on James Bond Radio every single week for upwards of three hours, four hours at a time, right? Yes. That's the sort of person I am. Yes. Now, I, I wasn't that big a fan of Skyfall. I came out, I thought, yeah, it was all right. Mm. This one... This one is absolutely bang on the money. Every single second, right. I was glued to that screen. It was, it's kind of like they've gone into my brain yeah. and gone, let's make the perfect Bond movie wow. for a hardcore fan, and wow. that's what they've served up. That's, yeah. I, I saw some comments tonight from people who may have been to the same screening as you who said Daniel Craig was absolutely 100% brilliant. Uh, Sam Mendes didn't make the film strong enough for him because uh, he was so good. Does that make oh, any sense? Well, it is, there's, a, there's a lot of action in this one, mm. and I, I guess that's the angle they're going for. But at the same time, it wasn't like cheap action. It wasn't, you know, just action for action's sake. Mm. It was all very, you know, it was... It was and i tell you what, what, one of my favourite things about it is, is you know how with the old classic Bond films, you, you always had like a stunt that kind of broke records and took things to the yes. next level, you know, when they did the, the car barrel rolls, jumping, yes. man with the golden gun, things like that. There's a, there's a stunt in the pre-title sequence for this that is absolutely mind-blowing. And right. it's, it's, it's like going back to that classic way of filmmaking. Not much of the old computer-generated stuff, mm. you know, for real stunts, which is... OK. It's, it's, well, on your, on your Twitter it. feed, I can't mm. quite read out precisely how you described the film in three words, but two of the words <laughs> are absolute <laughs> masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. There's, an, ad, there's yeah. an adjective in the middle. Or an uh, adverb, that's right. Tom, Tom, I've got to ask you to solve a problem, which I've already raised here with Mike Graham. Uh, traditionally, Money Penny is a secretary who sits in an office and lusts after James Bond and wants to romance yes. James Bond. Uh, but yes. but Money Penny in this film is the same woman who shot James Bond by mistake on the roof of the train in the last film. Yeah. Well, so has she now become an agent or something? Yeah. No. 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 She, basically, the idea was is she was a field agent at the beginning of Skyfall. She she messed things up a little bit by shooting Bond by mistake. Now she's got the desk job, so it's kind of the other way around. Basically. So she's been demoted. Yeah, in a sense, yeah. She she kind of went through that journey in Skyfall, and she was like, "Do you know what? Being out in the field isn't for me. I, I prefer a desk job." But, it, but it's not. But, but, but I think where Mike's getting confused here, mm. if you don't mind me saying so, Mr. Parry, is that he thinks mm. because it's a desk job, she's now automatically become a secretary, which is not quite the case. 
Uh, well, I, I guess so. I mean, she does get out and about a little bit in this one, I, I must be honest. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she's certainly not running around with guns and things well, like well, that. No, well, well, sure. in that case, they've completely changed the profile of Moneypenny. Moneypenny used to be a very simpering, womanly figure yeah. who's anxious simpering's for... Simpering's a bit harsh. Yeah, no, it's not. For Anxious for James Bond to romance her and make her Mrs Bond and all that. Whereas here, we've got a woman who, who is playing the same role, i.e. M's secretary... Who, who is now as capable with a gun as she is with a typewriter. So they have changed her profile, haven't they? Yeah, I must admit, I, that, that was one of the sort of things that I thought was not really to my taste with the last mm. film, to be honest with you. I, 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 I didn't think that was, was perhaps much, as much, much, such, such a great thing. But, uh, but she's, she's more mm. in, that, in that vein now. She's, she's all right now. Well, mm-hmm. Mr. Mister Parry was hoping to go okay. to a, a special sort of black tie I was, uh, yeah. opening of the film last uh, Saturday, Friday evening, I think. Last Friday evening. Uh, it's it's going to be on next Friday evening, so I guess you would urge him to go to this one. Absolutely, yeah. Honestly, mm. I cannot recommend it enough. It's like, for, for somebody like me who, who just obsesses over these things, sure. you, know, you, don't, you don't, if you meet me down the pub, you do not want to get me on Bond if you're not a Bond fan, because <laughs> I will be talking about it all night long. Um, but it's it's like they've taken all the classic things that I've wanted to see in Bond again for years, yep. and they've served it all up on a on a golden plate. Yeah, well, well that that's sounds brilliant, sounds absolutely, absolutely brilliant, Tom. Yeah, and, and thanks for taking the time to come and talk to us, Tom, because no as worries. the world's top expert on James Bond, <laughs> it's terrific to have you on the show. Thank you very that's much. It. No worries. Cool. If you want to listen to the show, just go to jamesbondradio.com. We certainly we will. will. Thank you very uh, much Tom, indeed. Thank you very much. And do you yeah. see how he managed to tell the whole story there yes. without giving anything away? You, yes. could, you could take a leaf out of that book because, no. you know, I mean, unfortunately, whenever you go on to tell us about Porky Vision yeah. or some yeah, movie yeah. or other, yeah. you know, you're always giving the ending away. I haven't given the ending away to the Sam Fox story yet. Yeah? Well, no, you haven't. We're going to no. get to that in a it's minute. It's a great story. I've got a great one here from uh, Pete, okay. uh, who says this, mm. right? Mm. Uh, he says it a little bit earlier, but uh, I didn't see it earlier. This is about yes. old cars. He says, he's, he's been quite rude about you, so I'm not going to read that bit out. But he says, what exactly no, don't mind has that. the... Sh- well, all right, then. What has the short-armed snob got against old cars? My car is a 1972 Renault 12 with 620,000 miles on the clock, really? and it's never broken down in the 26 years I've been driving it. Yeah. I've never even had a puncture. Well, I have to admire a man who's, uh, who, who has so little self-awareness, i.e. doesn't think much of himself, to drive around in a heap of junk like that. Yeah, but you see, that's because, I'm surprised, you, I'm surprised. That's because you equate having a nice car yeah. with being important. I'm surprised that the rust barrel factor, you know, from his car hasn't involved the seat falling through the floor of the, the actual chassis itself, and uh, and his car becoming like a Fred Flint- Flintstone version, where you use your feet to propel it Not along true. the road. Not true. Hmm? Now, finally, one here from uh, someone. Let's see, from uh, from Wikebold in hmm. Worcestershire. Uh, he's, oh, Doug here. Sorry, he says uh, you told your day from hell admirably without going off the subject. He says I'm still waiting for Porky's old boiler story from last week. Hmm. Any chance we haven't finished that one either? So well, the, the boiler, the story of the boiler. Well, we'll boiler we'll part two happens a uh, week tomorrow morning. Okay. Actually, when I come and right. replace it. Well, we'll need an update. Uh, mm-hmm. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Stimulating late night sports conversation for people who know that just trying to find someone sober to talk to at this time of night is like trying to find a pig on the moon. In the early morning, Mr. T. No rules news debate from around the world and around the bend. Uh, the two mics. Apply more lager. On Talk Sport. Yeah. Talk Sport, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on. There's one guy getting very worked up. I don't know if James Bond seems to get people very uh, right. uh, very sort of uh, emotional. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one from Mike Wren, he says, in South East London. Mm. For goodness sake, you idiots, he says. That is how Skyfall finished with her being introduced as Miss Moneypenny. And as she said, you pair of idiots, some of us are not cut out to be field agents. My God, you two know nothing. So hang, you know, on, hang on, hang on. Unusually that, rude. That's, that's, that's unusually rude, and it's not accurate. I saw the end of Skyfall yeah. the other night. Yeah. It was about three o'clock in the morning, yeah. actually, and I was up. And, yeah, but and she was in a de- at a desk job at the end of Skyfall, and she does say to him, because remember, you know, they're sort of standing there together in the same scene, and, you know, she's sitting at a desk. 
And she does say, I'm not cut out to be, you know, a field agent. No, I think the end of Skyfall is uh, Bond kneeling over the body of M in the, in the Scottish no, no, no. Uh, no, the, Highlands. No, well, you missed the end of it then, because they're on the roof and she get, he, he gets given Oh, that's right, M's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, little yeah. bulldog. Yeah, that's right, that's, yeah, and yeah, yeah. They, and, that, and that's where they have in that fact, conversation. In fact, I can run the conversation. It's a beautiful view, isn't it? Yeah. That's right, yeah. yeah. That's and right, that's right, when yeah. it, she reveals that she's no longer going to be a field agent. field work, yeah. And, he, cause he, and he's very grateful because he doesn't get shot again. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I don't know why old uh, Mike Wren has to be Get so rude about it. Yeah. Anyway, let me tell you about Sam Fox, yeah, right? On. The allegation is, and I stress it's nothing but an allegation... Of course. ...pin-up legend Samantha Fox was kicked off a plane after an alleged boozy bust-up, mm. uh, removed by security after being branded abusive and intoxicated. Uh, it was a £150 <laughs> Wizz Air flight to Vilnius in Lithuania. Wizz Air? Wiz Air. What's Wiz Air? Well, I don't know. It's one of these budget airlines is in Europe. New, is that the new, like, do you remember there was Buzz, wasn't there? Yeah, that's Which right. Which was yeah, the British Airways yeah. Well, this might be the other. Anyway, it says, onlookers say the 1980s page three girl turned pop star um, swore... I'm surprised is, they didn't call her the diminutive. They normally call her yeah, the diminutive. Yeah, it is claimed after being charged a £30 excess for a carry-on bag mm. and not getting priority boarding at Luton Airport. Yeah. She's alleged to have said... Uh, I shouldn't have to queue with these people. Now, that might sound like a derogatory sort of, you know, don't you know who I am type thing. Well, it, but is, I, well, it is, frankly. No, no, no. Yes, what she, it is. No, what she meant was, as you read into the story, she had actually paid for, um, what do you call it? Uh, priority boarding. Priority boarding, that's yeah. exactly right. And right. she felt that she wasn't getting value for money, you know. Um, well, maybe a lot of people would pay for priority boarding, though. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, yeah. Do you ever come across Sam Fox? Um, I don't think I've. ever When come I was at the Sun, her, no. we saw Sam Fox a couple of times. I think now, I've seen her at Do's. And yeah, things, now yeah. she she progressed beyond being a page three girl then, mm. and she actually well, she become a, a singer. singer yeah. That's right, yeah. But the thing is, it's no secret now that um, Sam Fox um, came out as gay and had a uh, you know a female partner in life yeah. who very very sadly died of cancer yes. a couple of years ago. Which uh, you know was a, a tragic um, uh, ending to mm. the relationship, obviously, but. In the days when we were at the Sun, she used to come in and she always used to say to the girls, you know, the secretaries and, and you know, how much she loved their hair. Yeah. And she used to, you know, fondle their hair and, and feel it and say it's right. beautiful and that kind of stuff. Mm. She, she was a very affectionate sort of person, yeah. you know what I mean? Right. So, and, and, Did you become friends with her? Well, not really, but, I mean, she didn't strike me. She didn't me. come anywhere near you, I presume. Well, yes, of course she did, because I was an important she didn't person. Come up and that the... touch your hair and say how nice it was. No, she didn't. No, no, no. no. Or but uh, your beard or anything. No, 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 nothing no. like that. But I mean, what I'm or saying sit is, sit on your knee or anything like that. Sorry. Or sit on your knee or anything like that. Well, she's not that sort of girl. She's not flirty no, like that or anything well, like that. You know, I'm just asking. I mean, she's very, very attractive, yeah. and um, she uh, was very small, though, wasn't she? Yes, she was. Yeah, yes, yeah, diminutive. Yeah, right. absolutely, is the right word. Like less than five foot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. but um, but extremely well turned out. Yeah. You know, sort of Louis Vuitton handbag and all that yeah. kind of stuff. You, you know what I mean? That, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, and, and, and she said here, I pay £30, or she, or she was telling them, according to Onlook, yeah, I pay yeah. £30 for privilege boarding, is it? Yeah, priority, priority boarding. boarding yeah. And, I, and I didn't seem to get it. Well, you know. I mean, if she's going on a budget airline, I think yeah. she has to take the rough with the smooth. I mean, it's one thing if you're going to get a first-class yes. ticket and fly with a regular airline and pay loads and loads of money. Yeah. And you can expect them to be fetid in a proper lounge. Sure. And you can be all uh, you know nice and, and, and exclusive and elite about it. But if you're going on a budget yeah. airline, uh, and I think this, this is a European-run mm. Budget airline. I'm sorry, you just have to line up with everybody else. That's right. I mean, look to balance this up. Uh, that's spokes, right. A spoke. Yes, that's right. Yeah. A spokesman for um, Sam Fox said um, uh, she certainly Who does wasn't. She think she is Kate Moss. No, 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 no. Excuse me. She said uh, she certainly wasn't drunk and she didn't delay the flight. She paid thirty pounds uh, for priority boarding. Uh, she was explaining that she had priority boarding. Um, so yeah. was she actually thrown off the flight, or was she just not allowed on it? Uh, a girl working for was apologised, and she caught a later flight. Yeah, she was escorted off the oh, flight so she, she was on, allowed on it, yeah. after the row escalated once she was inside the oh, cabin right, and all okay. that kind of stuff. So it's a bit of a misunderstanding. Bit of a misunderstanding, I would say. But yeah. um, so there may not be any blatheration involved here. Well, there may not be any blatheration yeah. involved, but some eyewitnesses claim there was. Uh, but yeah. I mean, but I mean, you know, Sam spokesman says no, there wasn't. Yeah, and uh, of course we accept her word. Of course. Absolutely. Absolutely right. No now, how about this one from Phil? Yes. Uh, Porky, I was in New York at the weekend to mm. see a special concert to celebrate John Lennon's 75th birthday. I heard about it that. It was at the Beacon Theatre near to where John lived. The band were a fantastic yeah. Beatles tribute band called the Fab Foe. Right. Uh, it was fantastic. I looked everywhere but couldn't see you. Yeah. Uh, and you tell everyone you're a Lennon fan. Yeah. Well, you can't be everywhere, can no, you? No, you can't be in every Lennon tribute concert in the world. But, I mean... Uh, the Beacon Theatre's not uh, on the Upper West Side, is it? I didn't think it was. I, I thought, thought it was in the village. I thought it was in the village, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, well, perhaps maybe... Maybe before I went to the country, Madeline 
live down there. You know, uh, maybe bit so. the old, uh, bit of the old, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do they call them people in gaff, uh, uh, kaftans eh? and all that? What, what the called? Harry Krishnas? No, not the Harry Krishnas. The um, hippies? No, what do they call that lifestyle? Bohemian, bohemian, the bohemian well, lifestyle. They don't wear kaftans just because they're bohemian. Well, uh, Len had a kaftan, didn't he? Well, that's There's some in pictures the 60s. of him in the kaftan. Well, that was in the sixties. Yeah, well, Most people had kaftans in the sixties. Yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah, John John Snow had one, didn't he? When he I was at university, he yeah. probably still got one. He probably still. He probably got quite one. likes to wear it on Channel Four News. Actually. Yeah, I'm sure he would. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he had a bit of a problem recently, didn't he? Because he. Um, uh, the man who used to be the Chancellor of the Exchequer was Nigel Lawson. Yeah. And, of course, Nigel Lawson is of a certain age now. Yeah. He lives in France. Oh, yeah. It's his only house. I heard him speaking on the news tonight. That's right. Well, so he, he must have come back for a House of Lords vote, wasn't he? Well, he's involved in the great debate over yeah. Europe, in yeah. or out, and the referendum. Well, and now he's getting involved in the great debate over the tax credits. Of course he is as well. Mm. But, anyway, what happened was he spoke out about the uh, European thing. Oh, yeah. And... John Snow tweeted out that, um, you know, uh, the former Chancellor, you know, Lord Lawson, was saying all this from his second house in France. Oh, really? But his son, Dominic, who writes a column in two Sunday newspapers... There used to be the editor of the Sunday Telegraph. Used to be editor of the Sunday Telegraph. Put in his... He, he writes a column in one Sunday paper and one daily paper. Yeah. I think it was in the daily paper. He wrote that it was a shame that John Snow um, tweeted out that my father was in his second... And it said brackets or third yeah. house in France. Mm. In fact, my father only has one house, and that's the house he lives in in France. Right. Did Jon Snow make this up? Oh, dear. Yeah. Mm. So, so has Jon Snow apologised? No, not to my knowledge. Well, he may have done. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. We'll, if check I've, his, uh, if well I've, I'll check his Twitter. If, if I've uh, libeled Mr Snow, I oh, didn't I don't mean think so. to. But uh, I'm not aware of uh, mm. Jon Snow having apologised. He may have done, and if he has, then obviously good luck to him. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's, it, it was an assumption based on Perhaps the fact that he didn't like uh, Lord Lawson. Well, that's often the problem with some of these assumptions. Exactly. You know, there's always some poison mm. behind them. I mean, you think, yes. well, you're just trying to make a point here. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, you got your facts wrong. Yeah, exactly. Speaking Mom. of uh, getting your facts wrong, yes. this guy Mike Wren is still having a go. Uh, he says, the reason for my anger was that one of you idiots tried to slate the new James Bond film because, as you yes. said, the woman who took a shot at Bond in mm. Skyfall was suddenly introduced as Miss Moneypenny yeah. in the new film. It wasn't sudden. It was done in Skyfall, as one of you begrudgingly admitted. Do you not think that this guy's got a few issues with anger? Well, he has Why got is a he few getting so angry, angry about know. a description of a film? I don't know. I mean, let's face it. Mike, take had, it easy, mate. You've had the sort of day where you could get angry, haven't you? you well, know I have I mean? been very angry today. Yeah, and you have been angry. But, you know, yeah. I'm much calmer now. Hey, by the way, you know that you, you broke down in the New Forest? Yeah. Have you ever seen a New Forest pony? Uh, saw quite a few of them. They're only about today. four feet yeah, high. They're really tiny. They're, they're like tiny. Shetland ponies, aren't they? And do you know what? Don't go anywhere near them because they're vicious uh, uh, little things. Well, a lot of them have now become sugar crazed nutters, <laughs> and they att- they attack you for, really? your, for your sweets and for your, your food. Well, I don't I don't, don't walk around with sweets no, on me no. normally. The minute since they I'm not sit five, the minute they see a human, they they they're going in there with their gnashes and chewing at their really? pockets because they think all humans carry sugar around with them. Well, really, they become be crazed. Yeah. And it's, it's happening all over the place, particularly in the Quantock Hills, which is uh, where you were. Is that where the New Forest... Well, the Quantock Hills are in the New Forest? No, sure? the Quantock Hills are in Somerset. Yeah, they're nowhere near the New Forest. Well, the New Forest stretches quite a lot across the country. <laughs> it you doesn't know. go to Somerset. No, it does end up in somewhere no, over there. No, it goes there. to Dorset. It goes to Dorset, yeah. that's right, yeah. You should know, that's your part of the world. One of these uh, donkeys attacked a, <laughs> uh, a passerby, broke broke the uh, the person's leg. It's not a donkey. It is. No, no not a donkey, it? a horse, sorry. A pony. It's, it's a, a pony. pony. It's a pony. That's right, yeah. Yeah, no. They, they're eating leftover picnics, yeah. and, and they, they eat packets of hand-fed polos now. They'll take your fingers off if really? you don't watch it. Yeah, I, yeah. Wouldn't, I wouldn't go near them. Dangerous creatures. Sugar uh, crazed. Yeah, sugar crazed. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mites. Coming up, we're going to talk to a Domini Clark, travel editor at the Globe and Mail. We'll ask mm. her about bladderation on it flights and uh, drunken mistakes that you make on holiday. This is Talk Sport. The Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast on Talk Sport with the new Ford Transit Courier. It's the breakfast show that doesn't compromise on delivering the biggest names from the world of sport. Join me from six o'clock. And cramming more into four hours every morning than you thought possible. The Alan Brazil Sports Breakfast. Weekday mornings from six on Talk Sport with the new Ford Transit Courier. The new small van with an impressive 1.63 metre load length. Last time we went close, it ended in agony. 
This time, England aim to build a wall of white and stand strong against the world's number one, New Zealand. International Rugby League is back in London. England go head-to-head with New Zealand on Saturday, November the 7th at the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park Stadium. Tickets start at just £22 plus £2 booking fee. So get yours now at rugbyleagueTickets.co.uk. Support the team and help us build a wall of white. Your car's engine was designed by experts in a sterile environment, using the latest technology to the highest possible standards. Clean. Powerful. Every single aspect designed to perform at its best. So why would you choose a fuel that wasn't designed to the same standards? Give your car's engine the fuel it deserves. Choose Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Performance Fuels. Actual benefits may vary. See shell.co.uk slash vpower. Here is an important news flash. Sky are offering a free brand new Samsung Galaxy Tab E when you join online. It's the Flash's tablet out there. You can use it as you please, but I'll be using mine to watch dashing new shows like The Flash on Sky One. To get your free Samsung Galaxy Tab E, simply join Sky TV online from £20 a month. But hurry, like The Flash, this Tab E offer is going fast. So search Sky Bundles before November 5th. Sky. Believe in better. Sky TV from £20 per month, direct debit. Subject status. £10 standard setup, upfront payment required. UK and Ireland only. Minimum contract and further terms apply. The BMW i3. It's not just an electric car. It's an electric car that drives like a BMW. Rentals from £299 per month. Discover more at bmw.co.uk forward slash i3. £3,699 initial rental. 36-month hire agreement from BMW Financial Services. Subject to states and availability for new vehicles. Order before 31st of December 2015 and registered by 31st of March 2016. UK only guarantees may be required. Mileage and other conditions apply when you return the vehicle. Very, very early morning sports radio for postmen. Full whip. Trolley dollies. Out of a dirt chip, pressed wet. And anyone who had to do a dawn runner after a very ill-advised one-night stand. Go, go, go. Over my the two mics on Talk Sport. I have to show a bit of notes because time was running out. And the geese are not to set my big park and take you out to Luke Airport. Ooh, we are. 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 Luke Airport. Ooh, uh, which Porky seems to think is going to help him win. I don't quite understand why he thinks well, that. Well, every time you go second, you win. That's not true. And, and it's because, that's you know what true. it is? It's about the resonance in the brain. No, the last thing the listener hears is your point well, of view. Score, and all of a sudden, you've got a psychological advantage the over score me. Is so, so I'm getting rid on. of it. The score is currently what? I don't know it's the score six... because I don't keep uh, account well, I, of it. Well, There's I have no to need keep to. count of it because people will ask. It's 6-3 to me, right? Which means you've won it three times. You've won it three times by going first. Listen, let's get on with the guest. We've got a very important guest on the line and don't want to keep him waiting so while you blabber on about it's some so nonsensical uh, theory you've got about the competition coming up later. All right, then. Let's say a very good morning to Domini Clark. Domini, am I saying it right or is it Domini? It's Domini. It's Domini. Domini. I'm terribly sorry. Yeah. Mm. My useless okay. producer didn't tell me how to pronounce your name properly. Mm. But never mind. Uh, you're from uh, the Globe and Mail in Canada. Uh, did you ever work with a guy called Richard Addis? Yes, I did, actually. When I started, he was, uh, yeah, he was our editor, publisher, publisher. Yeah, he used to be my boss as well. He used to be my boss ago. as well. Did he? Oh, yeah, Richard. Small yeah. world. Yeah, exactly. So, small there we world, go. Yeah. Nice guy. Very nice guy. Anyway, he's yeah. not the kind of guy that would get involved in any drunken sort of uh, uh, an unfortunate business on, a, on an aeroplane or, or on a holiday. Uh, but lots no, of, of people not. have. You've got a, um, a, a, a funny story uh, from uh, Las Vegas, I understand. Well, I have, I have a few, but <laughs> one of them, so I actually was drunk and that's why i ended up in las vegas uh-huh. uh it was like a girl's night and one of the other girls was saying she had a rare free weekend and she was moaning about how she wanted to go to las vegas so i said well i'll go to las vegas and i literally hung out with this girl for like three four hours beforehand so wednesday like midnight we booked tickets and friday morning we were on our way to las vegas which then at some point i ended up arguing with a table dealer i was insisting that we were playing blackjack when in fact we were playing texas hold'em 
But mm. I got the last laugh because I actually still won mm. without even knowing. <laughs> now, that's, I, I mean, now, in, in this day and age, particularly in the United States, it's quite unusual, isn't it, for uh, for somebody to go and get absolutely bladdered, as mm. we would say, and get into a sort of a, a, a rammy at the, uh, mm. at, the, at the casino table. Because, you know, some people still think they can go abroad and do that. But in America, people really frown on it now, don't they? Not in Las Vegas. <laughs> no, no, maybe no. not in Vegas. Yeah, no, maybe. certainly not in Vegas. Dominic, let me ask you this. My uh, colleague here, Mike Graham, and I both worked in America in the past extensively, the 80s and 90s. Mike still commutes there a lot because he's got children who are growing up there. Um, Mike tells me that the, the attitude of uh, airline crews now to people drinking on planes is much, much more severe than it was in the 80s and the 90s when basically they would give you as much booze as you wanted for the six or seven hours it took to cross the Atlantic. Is that still the case or have they tightened up considerably? I think, you know, as long as you're holding your liquor okay, I think they will still give you as much as you want. I mean, obviously, if you're starting to get a little rowdy, you're starting to get a little loud, they're going to cut you off because they don't want to lead to a situation where they have to land somewhere early. But, I mean, I've certainly been traveling with people who have gotten beyond their fair share of uh, (laughs) of drinks on a flight. Sure. You see, I can't see any reason to be rude to somebody on an aeroplane, particularly somebody who is uh, helping, you know, helping your your journey be comfortable, because if you start shouting at somebody about, I want some more drink, they won't give it you, you are on an absolutely no-win situation Mm. because there's nowhere to run to, is there? No, exactly. But, you know, what? air travel today, it's so uncomfortable, especially in coach. I think a lot of people... You know, they just they yeah. just lose sight of it. They get grumpy. They get a, one too many drinks in them, and, yeah. and all hell breaks loose, unfortunately. Well, I mean, if you're flying in economy, good luck getting mm. any drinks in you. Exactly. Because, I mean, one of the, <laughs> one of the things they do now uh, is they spend so much yeah. time away from you yeah. uh, that they actually, you know, they're not walking up and down the aisles anymore that they used to be. So you yes. just put your hand up and go, excuse me, could I have another drink? Yes. You know, they give you one drink after about an hour. Uh, then they serve the meal Terrible. where they might give you a bit of a uh, mm. bit of wine with it, mm. and then they never come yeah. back. Then they never come back. So, so they make if you go up to the curtain at the back, mm. you know they look at you as if you've just got out of the priory or some kind yes. of dried out clinic, and they're like, you know, what's wrong with this guy? He wants the third drink? It's unbelievable, yeah. you know. Yeah, and do they? Res- uh, yeah, and then they put they put the seatbelt sign on, so you can't actually get up yeah. anyway. Yeah, that, that, that's right. Now the thing is, Dominic, sometimes if you travel, I mean, you know, Mr. Graham travels in coach class. That's all right. I prefer to travel business or sometimes even first class. I found that. You never go class. anywhere. Uh, well, I, I, I must admit, I haven't travelled for a couple of years now. But in my, propellers lost in, in, first in, in my extensive career as chief foreign correspondent for a number of newspapers, <laughs> um, he's, just, he's just trying to chat you up now. Dominic. No, 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 no Dominic. I, I, I remember flying once from London to uh, Sydney. Uh, first class on Qantas, got an upgrade and all that. And f- frankly, the problem there was too much food and booze. I mean, it was so, it was so <laughs> lavish, you felt bad turning it down. You know, when 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 a when a, a member of the cabin staff came towards you, another bottle of Dom Perignon, you felt well. I suppose I should because you didn't want to feel that you were you know being awkward. I mean, is that a, is know, that it's, a, it's, another problem? It's, it's very stressful being up there in first class. I think I've flown business twice now. And you're right. I mean, by the time the hour and a half service is done, you barely have time to take advantage of your life lap bed. I uh, mean, this is yeah. just this yeah. is a tragedy of modern life right it really, there. It really is. And also, I mean, I, I imagine that, uh, that perhaps 20 or so years ago when mm. Mr. Parry and I were travelling around on, uh, uh, on, on, on jobs or on, on sort of freebies, as, as it used to be said, yeah. uh, that's, not, that's not really there anymore, is it? If you're a journalist now, you've got to declare your interest, you've got to make sure you don't take too many freebies from anybody? Oh, definitely, yeah, 100%. I mean, travel journalists, it's it's a little bit more of a gray area, but we're still always up front about when things have been covered, for sure. But if you're like a... You know, a news journalist, then yeah, you, you no freebies for yeah, you. See, yeah, see, in, in Mr. Parry's day when he mm. was when he was, you know, uh, what what would you say, straddling the world, covering it in terms of news and Absolutely. covering wars and all of that. Absolutely, he would think nothing of getting a free upgrade from Qantas and yeah. then dropping their name somewhere into a piece that you're oh, writing. I, oh, absolutely, you know, because that was done abs- with, without any any fear or favour. Absolutely, days. I mean, what's uh, <laughs> what's the problem if you've got access to a radio microphone or a newspaper that sells three million copies? Plug the people who are well, doing you can't your do it on the radio though. Well, they've got rules. About well, that. we don't do it on the radio. Now, Dominic, we have a we have a colleague here at Talk Sport. This is Mr. Graham and myself, who flies pretty extensively, and uh, um, he has a fantastic technique to make sure that in business class, in particular, the um, the flight assistant never misses him when she's got a bottle in her hand. And she's topping people off. He sleeps with a champagne glass on his shoulder. And uh, it's a magnificent technique. How does he manage to hold it in place? I've no idea. How does that 
happening. I, I've no idea, but he does. He does, believe me. And and the the tumbling of the fluid into the glass next to his ear, you know, wakes him from wakes his slumbers. Up, yeah. And then he then he's he probably quasts, just he's only half sleeping. Probably. He, yeah, he's yeah, he's dozing sort of thing, dozing. And then he quaffs that drink, and then, and then he sleeps again. I mean, th- this this is a magnificent um, talent that he has. Have you come across anybody else who who's who's, who's quite as good as that? No, never. I think he needs to like get a Kickstarter, like a jacket that holds the champagne glass there or something. A... I think a lot of people would be in on. Oh, that. just a little loop actually. Yeah, you can put it through. Yeah, that yeah. Work, it's, it? it's not a it's not a bad idea at all. No. He, he, he's a man who could drink for twenty four hours from here to uh, to uh, Australia and back, and it wouldn't affect him. He's, he's one of those sorts. But there is still a case, isn't there, Dominic? That if you go over the top and you do it. Even though the cabin staff on your plane might be quite tolerant, you've still got to get through immigration, haven't you? And they might sometimes have a, a different view. Yeah, I would think trying to go through immigration while intoxicated would be a really bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I am always sober by the time I get off the plane. I can't. Yeah, especially arriving in the UK, they don't they don't take jokes lightly there. Oh well, yeah. no, they Heathrow. don't. And neither do they in America either. No, I mean, Porky doesn't don't. remember. No, ever, definitely I mean, not. Porky doesn't remember walking off a plane ever. He's usually carried off on a stretcher. No, right? that's that's not true. But I do remember getting down in Chicago once after a long flight flight from London, and it had been a real party flight. You know, there'd been a few of us in in the business cabin. You know, really going for it. And I must admit, I can't even remember coming into Chicago. I woke up the next day and I was told by a colleague I, I was very close to um, to the borderline mm. of not being admitted to the United States of America. Can you imagine the really? shame? Yeah, can you imagine the shame? Being that sent I, back. Be awful, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't think they send you back. I think they make you spend the night in the well, cells no, they can, at the they airport. They can send you back. They can send you back. Friend, yeah. I mean, a friend of mine's husband, she was an American, right. who was married an English guy, yeah. uh, he arrived and at that particular moment hadn't applied for a green card, even right. though they were married. Yes. Um, and despite the fact that they had their wedding certificate and their passports and everything, mm. he was detained for about three hours and sent back to Britain and told you're going to have to wait there until you get a green card before you can come in. Oh, nothing to do with intoxication. No, no. Though. No, really. No, that's, so that's they, they will do that. Pretty and bad what about his, yeah, they will send you back. And what yeah. about his US Marshals? Because, I mean, I've come across a couple of them in, in, in the air. OK. And their jurisdiction... Have you really? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. I mean, their jurisdiction is very... I mean, it was particularly... Um, I mean, I don't know if they're still out there now, but certainly mm. in the five or six years after 9-11, yeah. every single transatlantic plane, which was run by the Americans, had, yes. had US Marshals on. And they mm. were air marshals, right? But mm. nobody quite knew where their kind of, um, you know, jurisdictions began and where it ended, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so how did you spot them? Well, they accused me of uh, harassing the stewardess. No, what, for a drink? Yeah. Oh, well, you see. And that... so I got into a row with them. Give you, um, you give yourself away. Uh, and then they, uh, they told me that they were going to arrest me. Um, and I said to them, well, how are you going to arrest me? Because we're mm. now in British aerospace, a- airspace, and I don't think you've got the... Uh, uh, you've got the right to arrest me inside my own airspace, yeah. so you better sit down. But they were, they were plain clothes guys. Um, and as, they, as we were getting off, I said, I wonder if you guys are carrying guns, because if you're carrying guns into Edinburgh, uh, that's illegal. Unless you've got a licence for it, I want to find out where you're going, I want to know what you're doing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they they, they, uh, they they backed off. But it was very weird, very strange. Mm, that it was, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to mess with people with guns when Certainly you're on a plane. Certainly not. I totally agree with well, you. Well, surely they're not going to fire a gun on a plane and we'd all die. Well, not No, really not smart. in the middle of the air, but... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but this is my point, though. My, but my point to them was, if you're coming, if you're coming down mm. into British airspace, and I haven't done anything wrong because I hadn't, you know, what right would they have to arrest me anyway? Exactly. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah good absolutely. Question. Anyway, Dominique, a great. Thank to you speak very to you. much, Dominique. Great to talk to you. Where's your next trip uh, off? Where are you off to next? I'm going to Miami in two weeks. Very nice. Oh, very nice indeed. Have very a great nice time. Too. That's Dominique Clark there from yep. the uh, Toronto Globe and Mail. Mm. And funny, I just thought of Richard Addis, who was the editor there. For yeah, a while. that's right. You mm. told me he was. He was my editor, I think. When I, I don't left. think he was, was he? Hang on. Well, I Nick think Lloyd he... was when I left. I'm sure he was there for a while. Really? I don't know why I've, I know him, but I do. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. He speaks very highly of you. Yeah, of course he does. Yeah, yeah. This is Talk Sport. We are the two bikes on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. He's Smashed it into the back of the net. Football for the people. Come on, give us a go. Talk sport. Crazy. But that's how it goes. Millions of people living as hoes. 
but maybe. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Uh, winners and losers coming up uh, a little bit later on in the mm. show. And there will be a podcast, of course, coming out as well. Yep. There is an NFL game on tonight. I've forgotten to. Oh, nobody cares. I've Don't ne- worry about I've it. Ne- I've neglected to give you an update, but I'll bring yeah. you an update on that. Soon. Oh, yeah. Who's playing? Uh, for those people who are uh, um, the ones who complain that I should give a warning beforehand. Yeah. I'm now trying to give a warning. And who's playing? Uh, it looks like Baltimore Ravens against uh, the Arizona Cardinals. So you'd actually know. Yeah, it's Baltimore Ravens against the Arizona Cardinals. No, you said it looks like because you've just well, seen the score. No, I'm not just saying that. I'm saying it you because that's my style on. of speech. Listen, it's, I want to talk 20, to you about trains. 20 to 10 in favour of Arizona. I need to talk to you about trains because we've been talking about cars and, and motorways and all well, that. Well, trains aren't any better. Well, do you know what? It's a good job uh, we have trains at these days. You imagine being on a train when they first invented trains, right? What do you I've, mean? I've come across this fantastic book. What, you mean like the rocket? Yeah, yeah, almost, yeah. It's, Stevenson's it, Rocket. It's, it's called The Railways, Nation, Network and People, and it's the most brilliant book yeah. about um, what happened to trains when they were first um, around. Now, they were first around in mm. round about 1840 or something right. like that, you know what I mean? Was well, it after Stevenson's Rocket? Uh, yeah, of course it was after yeah. Stevenson's Rocket, It was just, but only a few years after yeah. Stevenson's Rocket. But the, the problem with trains in those days was if you were a peasant, yeah. you travelled in an open-top wagon. Uh-huh. And about, you know, like... Dozens of people. Third class, that would be. Third right? class, yeah. yeah. They had first, second, and third mm. class. And third class didn't have a roof didn't on it. Didn't have a roof. No. <laughs> so, despite the fact that people used to wear two overcoats and yeah. britches and all that, they still mostly froze to right. death it's on still these pretty, journeys. a pretty exciting way to get around, though, yeah, well, well, it hadn't existed before. Yeah, yeah, hypothermia was a big hazard. In 1845, yeah. a wire worker named Jonathan John <laughs> fell, fell down dead just outside Bath Station right. after enduring a third-class journey in an open-sided carriage. Did he ever return? It's, I don't know. His <laughs> travelling outfit of two pairs of trousers, two waistcoats, two overcoats and a woollen neckerchief mm. had not been enough to protect him from the cold. Um, now, uh, now, you mentioned waistcoats over the weekend, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You said, so who was wearing a waistcoat that you uh, saw? Pellegrini. Pellegrini, yeah. But, uh, but I was, he wears a three-piece suit quite a lot, doesn't he? No, I was corrected and told it was actually a cardigan. Oh, was it? Underneath his suit. But that's worse, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's worse. I mean, if you're yeah. going to wear a three-piece suit, that's I agree. fine, but you shouldn't wear a cardigan. I agree. The other thing with these trains in yeah. 1840 right. was that quite often, because... There was hardly any signalling because mm. there were no electric lights. Well, there weren't very many trains, were there? No, but lots of trains ran into each other because there was no signalling. Right. And the other, the other problem was... Was this what the origins of the Great Western Railway were? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, they, uh, funnily enough, it was the Great Western Railway mm. that, um, that was the subject of this book yeah. to start oh, off with. Oh, you spent a lot of time on that. When yeah, I it, it, exactly. The other, the other problem was, the because it took, like, you know, ages to get from London to Bristol and then, you know, change the trains and bring them back again, yeah. they hadn't worked out how to shift the drivers, so the driver had to drive all the way and all the way back. Oh, right. So quite often he fell asleep and the train just ran into the but train did, in front uh, of it. Did they have a way of changing the engine from one into the other, no, probably not. No, not really. So when he was driving back, he was at the back. No, what they had is they had a turntable, oh, yeah. so they could put it on well, that they and, they t- and turn it round. Well, they had a sort of system, mm. but they couldn't turn all the carriages round, so it would often push the train on the way back oh, rather right. than pull it. You know what I mean? Well, I just asked you that, and you said yeah. no. They put it on a turntable. No, I just told you that. I just told you. Well, that. presumably they put it on no. a turntable, then it would be at the front. Would no, you? because because if you think about it, if the train goes from London to Bristol, yeah. it pulls into Bristol. The only thing, the only, the, I mean, the turntable was only big enough for one uh, piece of yeah. equipment. Yeah, but you put it on the turntable, right? Yeah. And you turn the turntable. Yes. And then you let the rest of the train go, and then you put it on at the other end. Isn't that no. how the turntable works? No. What that happened was it was the end of the line, and they just turned round and then pushed it back. Ah. See what I mean? Okay. You got it. And uh, and the other thing is that because. They had to carry such huge boilers because, of course, it was that steam, steam trains and yeah. all that. So a steam train at the weekend, actually. Oh, did you? There's an old steam in Corfe Castle. They've got a lovely oh, old steam nice. train. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's lovely. But um, quite often, the boilers would just blow up yeah. and kill everybody yeah. on the train because yeah. the explosion very was so hazardous. large. Very hazardous way it, of travelling. It, 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 it was very ha- and hazardous. So, and so did they have a roof on a second-class carriage, I presume? Uh, oh. I'm not sure about that, but they did They did on the first. Yeah. But the other thing was, even, even in the first-class carriage... Mm. The um, the lighting was oil lamps. Right. So quite often, when you went over a bumpy bit of track, <laughs> the roof would suddenly <laughs> burst into flames because the oil would spill onto the roofs, right. and then you had to sort of flee for your life. Yeah. And if the train was going at sort of 50 or 60 miles yeah. an hour, a lot of people got killed throwing themselves well, out of the train. I suppose under those circumstances, we yeah. could say that the, uh, the, the railway services have increased and improved quite a lot. Well, but, yeah, but not much. Yeah. Now, the worst one of all, of course, mm. is, you know, what do you do about sort of lavatory facilities yeah, yeah. On, on, on a train? Yeah, hygiene. <laughs> the, the gentleman... Well, is... I mean, it wasn't that long ago oh, no. where you would flush the toilet in a train oh. and, and it would just go on the train. Oh, dear me, don't even talk about it. But mm. any, anyway, the, the gentleman in the first class... 
<laughs> were always advised that if they wished to urinate out of the window, which yeah. is the only way to do it, <laughs> right? Yeah, you uh, you were better you were better to do it when the train was on a curve, yeah. because if you did it on the straight, it might blow back into the carriage. Yeah, but on a curve, right. it would only blow downwind and cover the people <laughs> in. Third I don't class. know why you find this so. Well, it seems it's difficult to even find this so amusing. It? It's disgraceful. So if you manage to get to Bath yeah. from London. <laughs> without dying of hypothermia, he'd almost certainly be soaked yeah, at some just, point by some kind of horrible been, uh, substance. You'd been sort of urinated yeah. on, you know. But uh, and, and the other thing is, a lot of people... That's shocking, isn't it? It is shocking, yeah. A lot of people lost their toes mm. because even if they didn't get hypothermia mm. throughout their whole body... Frostbite. Yeah, it was... It was. Uh, I mean, because it used to rain, obviously... Mind you, it'd be all right in summer, summer, wouldn't it? Well, maybe, but in the winter when it rained, they had to have holes drilled in the uh, the side of the carriages right. so that the water ran out. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you would literally be sitting in a foot of water, yeah. you know. Yeah. But the problem was, the holes to let the water out used to let the cold air in. Yes, of course. And well, you... to be honest, you haven't got a roof. I don't suppose you'll be too worried about a few holes in the floor. Well, you would, because it... it... You know what we said about uh, the origins of air conditioning, mm. that air compressed through small holes yeah. can make things much colder? Yes. That's exactly what happens with cold air coming in. Oh, yeah. So it used to literally freeze the feet off these people. Mm. They all got uh, frostbite and had yeah. to have their feet amputated for, for you know, and going on a train. probably not in a particularly nice way. No, no. Since ex- they were going ex- third ex- class. Ex- exactly. Sounds like we're actually on a train with that noise in the background. It, it does a bit, but, I mean, that's the air condition, try no. and keep this uh, studio cool. But uh, but it's a fascinating book, and, I you know, somebody sent to her. What's the it. book? Uh, I, I told you, didn't I? I think you did. Yeah, yeah, I just the thought you should repeat it, so in case people want yeah, to, you know... Yeah, it's called uh, get hold of it. The Railway Nation Network and People. It's by a bloke called Simon Bradley. And it is, uh, it, it is honestly, it's fascinating to tell you about the origins of mm. the railway industry. Now, bringing it right up to modern day, right yeah, up to on. modern day, guess what I've discovered? What have you discovered? That we are very, very close to having a train that goes at the uh, speed of sound. What? Yes. Where? Uh, well, not in Britain, eh? Not in Britain. I yeah. mean, they can't even get the the, uh, the Channel Tunnel train up to the same speed it does in France. I think, to be honest, it's a, a project going on in California. Yeah. But the but it's you know what it is. It's one of these um, like uh, it's in a vacuum and it's on a magnetic rail. Yeah, you yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. So, so it's actually floating. It's floating. Yeah, because you couldn't have a train going that fast on. An actual track, could you? No, it would come off, wouldn't it? So mm. it, it goes through a tunnel, literally. Yeah. But it goes at the speed of sound. Right. And 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 it, and it's absolutely brilliant. And you know, you've read all this before, but this is absolutely feasible. Here, let me tell you. So let me how tell long you. would it take to get from, say, Los Angeles to New York? Well, it says here, construction of a transportation system designed to propel passengers mm. through airless tubes yeah. at the speed of sound will begin. Could begin within weeks. It's called the Hyperloop Transportation Technology, oh, yeah. known to us insiders as the HTT. Mm. And they're going to construct a five-mile Hyperloop system in California using vacuum-sealed tubes, magnetic levitation, creates an almost frictionless train that will reach 760 miles an hour. Five, a five-mile loop they're building? Five-mile loop, yeah. Well, it's not, going to go, it's not going to take long to do that, is it? A few seconds, will it? Yeah, like, that's mad. Seconds Shouldn't they something? be building, like, a 700-mile... Uh, well, I think they're going to st- test it, aren't they? I think they're going to test it. Well, yeah, it, but yeah. imagine testing it on... Something that goes 750 miles an hour yeah. on a five-mile track. Well, yes, that's be true. Testing, like you said, it'd be seconds. It'd be like, right, test number one, right, done. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I think they need to give it a bit more thought. Well, look, we can work this out, can't we, with our knowledge of America. How far is it from Washington to New York? It's about... Washington, D.C. to two, New York. 200. Uh, no, it's more than that. Is it 300? I think, so. I think it's more like 400, actually. 400? I've yeah. driven it a few times. Yeah, I, I didn't think too. it was that far. I think it's about 400. Is it 400? Yeah, okay, so. say it's 400. Yeah. That means it would take half an hour on this train. Yeah. Travelling at the speed of sound. But presumably it would take a while to get up to that speed as well. No, I don't think so, because, as I well, say... you can't just get in it and it suddenly goes at the speed of sound. Well, it's, there's no resistance to it, because it's in an airless uh, uh, tube, yeah, you see what I mean? Still, there still has to be... You can't just go for it. It only takes seconds to get up to 760 yeah. miles an hour. Really? What do you think? I don't know. Well, haven't you ever travelled I've never travelled uh, that fast. Hey. Eh? Fastest I've ever travelled, yeah. actually, was on a plane coming back from Mexico in the summer. Oh, yes. Because there was a bit of a tailwind. Yeah. And we were doing about 650. Well, I remember getting back from New York once mm. on a plane in about three and a half hours, believe it or not. Are you sure it wasn't uh, Concord? No, it wasn't Concord. The tailwinds yeah. were well, apparently the incredibly strong. Is about five. I think five is about a quick. Yeah, three and a half, maybe not. Three and a half, I think, might be over egging. I, I honestly think it was about four and a half. It was incredibly quick. Mm. The, the, I mean, so quick that. People, when we got out in Heathrow, complain they have to wait two hours for their cars yeah. and all sorts of things. Well, this is the thing. I mean? I mean, now they fly higher as well. Yes. So, they, you know, that 20,000 feet. They're flying yeah, more that's... like sort of 45,000 feet now yeah. instead of 33,000. So, sure. But, I mean, to go at 750 miles an hour yeah. on effectively the ground yeah. would be quite frightening, I think. 
uh, it, it, have any it, windows, this thing? must have no windows, right? Well, it, You wouldn't want to look out. Well, why would you want to look out if you're in a tube? There's nothing to well, see anyway. Well, that's what I'm, well, well, you're actually inside something. Yeah, you're in a tube. Oh, right. You're literally in a tube, and, 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 and the magnetic thing, you know, holds you in place and all mm. that kind of stuff. But, but that's... have a bar on it, do you think? Uh, well, I would hope so, wouldn't you? Well, if you wouldn't you got want to go on it otherwise, would you? Well, not really, to be honest. I wouldn't want to sit there for... I mean, uh, supposing, ultimately, they made it uh, a trans-American uh, yeah. train. Uh, New like York to Washington. Sea. No, no, across the land. Oh, across the land. Yeah, 3,000 miles. Yeah. Uh, it would only take uh, four hours. Yeah, something like that. To get from New York to mm. L.A. And that would be a lot quicker than an aircraft. It certainly would. Because if you went to, say, you know, Penn Station yeah. in New York, got on your train, that's yeah. a lot quicker than going out to yeah, LaGuardia they, or... Yeah, except they'd or, have to build or, a whole new kind of terminal, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah, they would, but Penn once Station. you got there, you just get on the train. You yeah. don't have to hang around for a couple of hours. So do they envisage it being a tube underground or yeah. a tube no, overground? overground. All right. So, you know, like when you go to Chicago, yeah. they have a, like, what's it called? Oh, the L. That's it, yeah. The L, yeah, the elevated yeah. Uh, subway. That's, that's right, uh, exactly, and it would be just like that. Mm. Um, well, it could be exciting. Oh, it could be incredible. Oh, here are, they say that the first planned route would be a 380-mile journey from Los Angeles to San Francisco. That could be the first commercial route, cutting the travel time to 30 minutes, as, yeah. as we said. So how soon do you think we'll be able to get on this thing? Well, I don't know. It says construction of a transportation system uh, could start within weeks. Wow. How about that? Yeah, there's a couple of questions for you here. Right. Uh, one from William. Does Porky know that the towns Virginia Water and Cobham in Surrey have become the first millionaire yeah, towns? Yeah, I do. I do. We'll talk about that. And, and there's next. one in Cheshire as well. I think it's called Hale or Hale oh, yeah. Barnes. Okay. Uh, where well, the, where the, minimum, the minimum, yeah, minimum price of a house is, uh, is a million. By the way, I need to talk to you about development you probably haven't noticed over the mm. weekend. The amount of footballers' homes which are now being raided well, by Well, did gangsters. I not point this out to you? Yeah. I said, yeah. uh, it's, it's not only to you, but I said it to Sadie War as well, yeah. that this is clearly something that's being uh, organised. Well, she uh, wasn't convinced. Well, uh, Doug uh, from Droitwich says yeah. this. Uh, he says, hi, gents, it's Doug again. Uh, am I going to hear part one of the old boiler story, or am I waiting as long as my team Villa to win their next game? The suspense is killing me. Well, let, everybody heard. knows part one of the boiler story. All right. Well, we need to we need to revisit it. I think. Well, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it's got a conclusion because it's ongoing. Oh, okay. But I'll keep you posted. All right, we'll keep you updated. The following offer applies to new Mercedes Benz SUVs ordered between the second and the eighth of November, 2015. Three years free servicing is based on three services over 36 months. No cash alternative. When you buy a brand new Mercedes Benz SUV, your first three years of servicing are taken care of for free. So while you're on your three camping trips. Your dozens of takeaway pickups. They forgot the poppadoms. Or your hundreds of school runs. Daddy, why is that cow climbing on his friend? You can rest assured that your Mercedes Benz SUV will be running like it's brand new for no extra cost. Visit our SUV event at your local retailer from the 2nd to the 8th of November. Unmissable offers from Mercedes Benz. Vice called Halo 5 Guardians spectacular. Eurogamer named it the best sci fi first person shooter campaign in the business. An official Xbox magazine called it one incredible game. Join the greatest hunt in gaming history. Buy Halo 5 Guardians at Tesco only today for £30 when you buy selected Xbox Live cards and subs. Tesco, every helps. Peggy 16, terms and conditions apply. Left a bit, right a bit, little bit more to the right. Mm. Ah, the fuss pots. We like you because you're not happy until everything is just right. And at Wix, nor are we. That's why we have a stylish range of tiling and flooring to suit all tastes. And right now, there's up to half price off all styles, so you can get everything 100% right. Wix. Let's do it right. The BMW i3. It's not just an electric car. It's an electric car that drives like a BMW. Rentals from £299 per month. Discover more at bmw.co.uk forward slash i3. £3,699 initial rental. 36-month hire agreement from BMW Financial Services. Subject to states and availability for new vehicles order before 31st of December 2015 and registered by 31st of March 2016. UK only guarantees may be required. Mileage and other conditions apply when you return the vehicle. Rugby World Cup 2015 on Talk Sport with Mastercard. To celebrate the biggest event in the rugby universe, Mastercard is turning the world over. Prices. Get essential updates from every match throughout the tour. 
tournament, plus passionate comment and expert analysis from a team of iconic internationals, including Brian Moore and David Campisi. It's the greatest show on home turf. Rugby World Cup 2015 on TalkSport with Mastercard, worldwide partner of Rugby World Cup 2015. Talk sport. Bang on target. They've done it. Work hard and you play hard. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. You won't lose out. The power of teamwork. It's easy. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. And of course, uh, as we said, there will be a podcast coming out. How about this one from Julian? He says, yep. I remember Skytrain a uh, Laker where it was all one class and you had to queue up around the aircraft with cash for a drink. Do you remember? Do you ever go Laker? Laker Airways? No, it was before my time. I used to go standby on Laker Airways. No, you yeah, couldn't have done. Yeah, when I was younger, when I was before I was kind of oh, hang on, working. Hang on. It was hang... around about the early 70s. No, hang on, you're absolutely right, because it went bust when I just started on the Express in Manchester, yeah, probably because they had you, flights the, from Manchester. Yeah, by the time you were working and yeah. travelling, you yeah. probably weren't going to use it. But before that, because I, when I was first going out yes. with my uh, girlfriend, who later became my wife, right. I used to go on, on standby all the time. I used to go down to Victoria Station, yes. and you used to have to kind of queue up yeah. through the night. Right. And by the time 7 o'clock came, they'd yeah. open up the, uh, the office, and if you were first in, yeah. you could get a ticket for about 100 quid. It went bust, you know, because yeah. uh, in the end, the monopolised state airlines like British Airways just uh, reduced the prices to yeah. minimum right. to put Laker out of business. Yeah, they and, did. And, and that was a disgrace because that meant that, you know, the freedom he gave people to yeah. travel cheaply yeah. was, was well, slipped Well, he was out. responsible for opening up American travel, Of course travel, he was, yeah. He? yeah Speaking of, of which, I'm just being told that US Airways flew their last flight last weekend. US Airways? US Airways. I used to fly them a lot. Where from? They were, they were Well, their hub used to be in... Um, I think it used to be in Pittsburgh or something like that. Did it? But they flew from New York and they flew oh, all I over see. the country. They were mostly kind of eastern, central kind of airline. Mm. They didn't fly, tran- they didn't I fly I transatlantic. Didn't, no, I didn't Although I once it. flew transatlantic with them. I think flew into Philadelphia yeah. from Manchester. And it was brilliant. Because really? I got into Philadelphia airport there was nobody there. No. There was like no immigration queue, nothing. Why? Because hardly anybody ever flies there. Oh, well, everyone ever goes to Philadelphia? Well, not transatlantic. Well, that's probably why they're not in business anymore, then. Well, you know what WC mean... Field said? What was that? When he, on his grave, he said, I'd rather be here than in Philadelphia. Yeah, well, yeah, I suppose most people would. There's nothing wrong with Philadelphia. It's I okay. like Philadelphia. Yeah, I do as well. Well, that's where Rocky comes from. Of course, of course he does, yeah. You know so much about it. Yeah, I do, yeah, because the Rocky quiz last yeah, week. Exactly. Now, now then, did you know that... Uh, did you know, did you know... Excuse me, that um, thieves are targeting... You're talking about your two Mercedes, right? Yeah, yeah. Two old jalopies. No, I've got two Mercedes. Well, I've got one Mercedes. You've got a Mercedes. No, you've got a Mercedes. Yeah, I've got one. Oh, what's the other one? It's a Land Rover. Oh, OK, right. Uh, Land Rover and, and, and... All right, well, well, let's just say that the, the Mercedes you have yeah. is the worst of your two jalopies, isn't it? I would the say one with well, all it's, the the, dents. it's the older one, yeah. It's the one with all the dents yeah. in it and all that kind of stuff. Now, did you know that in one month alone... Um, 24 Mercs, 4x4 four four Mercs, yeah. have been stolen, and the police think to order, by thieves, yeah. who then strip out some extremely precious metal oh, yeah. in the um, exhaust system. In the exhaust system? Yeah. What sort of precious metal? Well, like I, zinc I, or something? Uh, yeah, I think it is, I think it is zinc or, ah. or, or something like that. But well, it, copper? Uh, um, no, I mean, no. No, I don't think it's copper. Mm. And... and, and um, well, you see, so they're not actually using the cars; they're just taking that stuff. Yeah, they're just taking the stuff out of the out of the car. Mm. And, and I came across this because I kept reading reports about these thefts. You know, I thought that's odd, and I had a look. And, well, you and want to be careful because your new one will have all that all those gizmos on it. Won't apparently, it? it's only on. Uh, sorry, they're not even four by fours. They're, they're on Mercedes vans. Oh, vans! I don't know why, but they they apparently they they only put them into vans. Yeah. I don't know if that's because they have a, a, a heavier um, load bearing axle or something like that. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. But 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 for some unknown reason, uh, this is what's happening, mm. and people are stealing them. Yeah, me. Yeah, shocking. Now, Julie, it's, well, it's, it's absolutely shocking. Well, it is. But I mean, funny enough, when I was uh, when my car was recovered, if you yeah. like, by this yeah. big company down in uh, in Bournemouth in Hampshire, yes. around that sort of area, as we drove into their kind of parking area, mm. he said the guy uh, looked over there uh, uh, to the right and said to my kids, he said, "See all those cars over there?" And there was a whole kind of yeah. parking lot full of about hundred cars. Yes, he said, "These are all cars that we've recovered on behalf of the police." Which don't have insurance. Really? Yeah. What, they go around uh, repossessing cars? Yeah. Well, they don't have to repossess them, but they're cars that might have been involved in some kind of incident or other, but they haven't got insurance. 
No, but sorry, are you cars. saying they drive up to people's homes? Because you know these days, mm. the police with their tracker cameras and all yeah. that can get a number plate yeah. and then see if the car's registered yeah, for insurance. Yeah. Right. If it's not, are you saying they the police go it. around and take the car? Well, I think they do, yeah. But maybe they get these guys to tow them because they've got the big yeah, towing... Yeah, exactly, down, yeah. You know, they put them on the back of their lorries. Yeah, but hang on, the guy turns up with his towing trunk, says, right, I'm taking your car, you've got yeah. no insurance. Right. The, the house owner who owns the car mm. says, no, you're not, and what happens? You, a, a well, punch I, up, uh, well, no, I presume if he produces an insurance certificate, yeah. which is valid, then mm. they don't take the car. Yeah, but, I mean, surely nobody's going to sit there and watch somebody take their car. No, but there are a million cars on the road at the moment, they reckon, which are being driven without insurance. I think it's a good policy. I'm surprised they get away with it. I mean, it. I don't think it's so much that they turn up at people's houses and take your yeah. car away. Mm. I think it's more that, you know, uh, they, get, uh, if they find a car that's abandoned or something, the police say, you've got to go pick this one up. For whatever reason, maybe or involved in an ex- accident. Maybe this happens. Maybe if the police stop somebody for a spot check or something yeah. like that, which you can do, and you they know, tell them to get out of the car, get out of the car, right. and all that kind of stuff, and they say, right. and they say, I've got insurance, yeah. and then they call the pickup truck yeah. and say, come that and take this it. car yeah. away. That could be it. Too. Yeah. Now, well, I mean, the other thing that, yeah. that, uh, that happens a lot, and people have complained about this, is that some police car systems, mm. uh, or sometimes the DVLA computer itself, mm. has not been properly updated. So you can be pulled over by yeah, the cops, that's true. and they check the DVLA computer, and it says, no, you haven't got insurance. You go, well, hang on a second, I yeah. have. That's why it's always a good idea to carry it. And the other thing, because you don't have to put a tax disc in the window of your car yeah, anymore, right. there's a lot of confusion there about which cars are Have you taken your old tax disc out? No, I it's still either. there. And it's dated, I think, October last year. Yeah, mine is, I think, February of this year. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird, isn't it? Now, I've got this thing about the... Uh, you see, because I know I was on the ball here. Somebody's just produced the evidence, right? Uh-huh. 24 Mercs van theft. Yeah. Police are hunting thieves who stole 24 Mercedes Sprinter vans in yeah. just 23 days in one county. Blimey. Detectives believe the vehicles have been targeted for their exhaust systems uh-huh. and catalytic converters, yeah. which can feature precious metals such as platinum. Oh, really? Yeah. And palladium, I'm told, as well, perhaps. Palladium? Mm. No, really, that's palladium. Palladium's a precious metal. Is it? Yeah. Right. Gwent it's Inspector... also a theatre, of course. Carl Williams... It's a very Welsh name, isn't it? Uh, Advised other owners to park their locked vans in well-lit open areas and install CCTV. What good is that if some guy comes on... Uh, um, jacks up your yeah. van and steals your exhaust system. Yeah, I know. So they're just actually taking the system. They're not yeah. taking the whole van. No, just taking the system. Blimey. Well, I don't think oh. I want my. I don't think I want my exhaust system. So I no, think they, I'll certainly, be right. they certainly won't want your exhaust system at all. Uh, now, how about this from Julian? Right, right talking about uh, travelling by train. Right, uh, he says uh, I used to get bladdered out of Victoria each night on the mm. 1950 Eastbourne and Hastings train. Right, Matthew Harding was on most nights. He said it was the days when they had their own buffet car and it was like a local with the same people on it every night. And Matthew Harding was on it. Apparently so. Must have lived down that way. Well, he might have lived. Uh, that's southern. That's the southern route. Yeah, which goes well, down he, sort he, of through Gatwick. That's right. He mm. lived down in Sussex or something like. That you're yeah. absolutely right. Uh, lovely man, Matthew Harding. Went yeah. to his office once. In he he made all his money off something called reinsurance. Yes, and that is high risk insurance, yeah. which he Basically was very helping insurance companies yeah. to insure what they're getting. That, right? uh, ex- exactly, mm. uh, helping insurance companies insure against losing their, their 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 cases and all that kind of stuff. And he was apparently brilliant, you know, at, at spotting the opportunities yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But I went to his office once, and it was some debate about his relationship with Ken Bates yeah, when yeah. they were both directors at Chelsea. They didn't get on very well, did they? Didn't get well. Didn't get on well at all because Ken had struggled to turn Chelsea into a modern day club and mm. Chelsea Village. Yeah. Matthew wasn't interested in Chelsea Village he just wanted to improve the team. Yeah, yeah. So he paid for one of the stands called the Harding Stand which right. is still there today mm. and then Ken Bates banned him from the ground right. and all that kind of stuff but anyway the point is um, I went up to his office in the city beautiful office, mahogany furniture I remember. Really? And, yeah and, he, and he, 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 he would never ever Tried to hide the fact about how much he enjoyed life. He always used to say, it's great fun being me, you know, Mike. I said, um, certainly looks like it for me. He said, yeah. yeah, come on, let's go and have some lunch. And then his, his chauffeur-driven Bentley would pull up downstairs outside mm. and we'd go to that hotel on the embankment, which has been closed for a couple of years while it's been renovated. Didn't mm. it used to be the Swiss or something? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Was it Swiss Hotel? Yeah, the Swiss Hotel, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so, yeah. It was, it was owned at one time, I think, by the Barclay Brothers, yeah. who... Who own a lot of hotels, uh, including the Ritz. They own the Ritz. Yeah, they? but I'm not sure if they still own it or yeah. whatever. But anyway, the point of my story is, uh, we'd get into the restaurant there, and Matthew had his own wine store inside the restaurant of this hotel. Yeah, right. so we'd have the food and all that, and right. with each course, it'd be, oh, you know, bring me the um, the white that we drink yeah. this. And but um, see, I often we, wonder if mm, you're that wealthy, yeah. whether you run a place like that that ever makes any money, because you don't presumably drink it to profits, aren't you? Well, he didn't own it. Oh, the Barclay Brothers it. did. Oh, I see. I just told you the Barclay Brothers owned it. 
Did oh, I so you said he owned it? No, I didn't. No, oh, okay. No. Why do you think I was talking about the Barker Brothers owning the Ritz as well? I don't know. You were confusing me again. No, yeah, well, no, you weren't listening. That was yeah, your problem. No, you were confusing so, me. So, anyway, the point is he had his own wine store there. So, the white with the star turned me a load of red with the uh, the beef or something like that. And then his, 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 his coup de gras was the... Um, the Dessert uh, wine? Well, no, he had dessert wine, but after dessert wine was the coffees. Oh, yeah. And with the coffees, he had this fantastic brandy, yeah. you know what I mean? You should have been out. drinking that, should you? Well, I didn't have a dicky heart in those oh, days. Okay. All my heart worked in those days. Right. Or at least I thought all my heart oh, worked. Yeah. Well. I didn't realise that it was slowly deteriorating yes. at the rapid rate mm. it was, you know, mm. to, to bring it to the point today where only one third of it works, yeah. obviously. But, uh, no, the point I'm making is that... So was it like that sort of Hennessy XO type brandy? It or? was just brilliant. Mm. And, and although he was an extremely successful businessman, mm. we might sometimes leave his office at midday... Yeah. And his Bentley would come and pick us up at the old Swiss hotel yeah. at six o'clock in the evening right. to take him back to his office, right. where he would then say, oh, we might sit over there, and I'd, I'd sit there and watch a bit of telly or something. Yeah. He, he'd literally answer about four phone calls, which he'd make, yeah. d- n- reply to about three uh, emails, and yeah. says, right, that's it, finish for the day, come yeah. on, let's go and have a drink. Well, and then the Bentley would come back, and yeah. then we'd go off to the West End or something. Yeah. He was an amazing man. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely incredible. Now, yeah. here's one from Rep, or Johnny, uh, as he calls himself. He yes. says, if Porky wants to learn about trains, he should come to Swindon, uh, where Brunel was pioneering the railways. Well, funny you should say that, but Brunel has a very big connection down in Portsmouth yeah. as well. And there's one establishment in which I sort of eat and drink down there, and I always take a table in the Brunel room. Oh, yeah. And it's got a huge picture of Brunel, the most famous picture of him, alongside the chains to the Great Eastern. You oh, know yeah. that huge yeah, chains yeah. that they right. built and all that? Yeah. With his, with his top hat on, mm. cigar in his mouth, yeah. thinking very, uh, you know, deeply about his next engineering mission. Amazing So character. I know all about Brunel. Don't Amazing worry about that. character. Yeah. Now, look at the time for a moment, because we're running are, slightly late. We're not very far away, though, from uh, winners and losers. New format this week. Uh, I'm going first. This is Talk Sport. Yes. Stimulating late night sporting debate for long distance lorry drivers. Young mums. What time do you call this? Coming on? And students who've taken too many of those caffeine tablets. <laughs> the two mics, Harry and Graham on Talk Sport. Talk Sport, we are the two mics, and uh, we have to decide upon a quiz this week. It struck me that uh, yes. we're just talking about uh, Isambard Kingdom Brunel yes. there. Yes, Would you fancy a little quiz yeah, on Yeah, I'm, I'm fine about that. I'm a bit of an expert on that one, to be honest. Okay. Yes, All indeed, right. yeah. And, I mean, obviously it's not involved in movies or anything like that. It's no. Just, it's a broad area. It's, oh, absolutely. You know, Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Good he, he, subject, that. He was a great man from that era of, of British dominance and the British Empire, and mm. the other guy I loved from that era might do him one of these days... Capability Brown. Capability Brown's yes. another one, yeah. Yes. Now, let me read you this from Steve. This will mm. knock your socks off. He says, it's the catalytic converters that thieves are stealing from Mercedes Sprinter vans. Mm. I work for a company with a fleet of 12 Mercedes vans. Yeah. We came in after a weekend, and all 12 had the converters stolen. No. It cost about four grand each to replace. No. Yeah. That is an amazing story. Yeah. Who does that come from? From Steve. Steve, thank you very much indeed where he's for from, but I mean, us. I mean, I wonder if yeah. insurance will even cover that, because obviously now, yeah. uh, if this is known about... They'll probably say to people, if you don't lock your vans up, we're not going to we're not going to pay to uh, to, to well, replace them. Well, even if you lock them up, people climb over the fences, don't they, to go at the well, vans? I mean, I mean, no, but I mean, if you lock them up in like a proper lock up, like a garage. Yeah, but what I'm saying is this: that the main issue that people who own and control vans have is mm. to make sure the vans can't be moved out of the compound. Right. So what they're really concerned about is putting very strong locks on the gates. Mm. However, if the thieves only want to take a part of the van and yeah. not the van itself. Right then, obviously, you've ignored the fact they can climb over the wall into yeah, the place. Right. They might not be able to get it out because yeah. you've got very big, solid doors. You don't need to drive it away. Yeah. You drive it away. Sure. Yeah. And would you notice, actually, if somebody had even taken it? I mean, would you, is there a danger you would drive out in the van without realising they'd nicked the catalytic converter? Because well, that's then going to pollute the atmosphere. No, it wouldn't start, would it? If, you, wouldn't if, it? if they've taken the catalytic converter. Well, they've, they've, dis- well they've, they've, they've disabled a part of the car, haven't yeah, they? But I don't know if that means it can't go, though. No, I know for certain it wouldn't go. That, really? that, no, it's a ridiculous assumption. Have you ever had an exhaust pipe go on you? An exhaust, you know, actual system uh, uh, drop go. Drop off. Well, not drop off, no, but like have a hole in it or something. I remember once 
uh, when and, I was living in Wiltshire. And your car starts sounding like an sounds aircraft. Sounds like a Spitfire. Yeah, that's I right. Had to yeah. drive to, <laughs> I had to drive once. I think we were flying to Belfast mm. or something. Mm. And we had to drive from Wiltshire to Luton Airport. Right. And the thing was making so much noise. Yeah, all the way. And it was an old, it was like an old company, Mondale. Yeah, it's, it's, horrendous. Ter- it's terrible. Yeah, absolutely yeah, horrendous. Yeah, I've had that, and it is absolutely terrible. Now, William says this, trains and boats and planes, nobody talks to anyone mm. anymore. Mm. All their eyes are looking downwards it's on true. tablets. It's true. Mm. But it makes the world go round, I'm afraid. You know, communication makes us a well, wealthy society. Well, I'll tell you what, one of the things, just to go back to my day of hell, one of the things that was 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 kind of very, I suppose, important to mm. me that I wasn't able to do, I couldn't get on Twitter, like, all day. Right. Because having sat in this place for, you know, three yes. hours where there was no uh, no ability to get 3G, yeah. I couldn't get on Twitter. And then yeah. I had to sit in the van with the guy for 45 minutes talking to him, you know. Yes. And then uh, I had to drive from there all the way back. And yes. then I had to go to sleep, then I had to drive up here. So, I mean, for anyone who has missed me on Twitter today, I'm just going to say I'm sorry. OK. And I'll try and I don't think anybody through. missed you. I didn't see any complaints. Well, you know, again, yeah. I didn't see any sympathy coming from you. No, no. I didn't see you announcing to the world that, you know, I'd had this problem. Well, I didn't know you were broken down. Yeah, you did. I told you. Well, only to after you'd got going again. Did I send you a, a text saying, hi, pal, how's it going? Do you want me yeah. any help on the phone? Yeah, didn't I? any help on the phone. What yeah. does that mean? Well, it means I, you know, I thought, you, you see... I thought you might have offered to come and get me. No, 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 no. What I was saying is I thought you might have been stranded somewhere. You'd probably bounced your... Um, your credit card all over card. the weekend. Yeah, no, your no, black card, no. yeah. It doesn't bounce. And, and, and I would have helped you out to get a rescue service or something like that. Right, there's one here. It says, You're uh, going to get one of these black cards, now, aren't you? You're feeling so I'm, left I may out. do, because somebody, so sent, somebody sent me a picture of one. You get so left out. No, no, no. Right, it says, Have you heard of Porky Class on the trains? It's a single carriage where everybody can sit there and just talk nonsense. Yeah. That is very hard. Hey, talking about talking nonsense, how about this? I've forgotten mm. about this. This is from yes. Mervyn. Uh, I thought I heard Porky on Jeremy Vine last week moaning about food served on wooden boards. I did. Uh, I had tools on, thought I could hear his whining voice. Do you know, I'll tell you all about that. This is a great, so you were a on great another, issue. So you are on the radio station again? Yes, I did, yeah. Right. Yes, this was with Jeremy Vine. Because, I mean, I thought, because you were doing the James Bond thing on mm. your own mm. and then going to Arsenal on your own, yes. that would have been enough for you to do on your own this weekend. Uh, no, But no. you got another request to do something on your own. It was on Friday morning, actually, funnily it? enough. Yeah, yeah, the day of the James Bond premiere. I must uh, have missed that. Premiere. But um, that didn't happen, obviously. Uh, yeah, what happened is I went and did it. And what it's about, it's, it's about... Um, funnily enough, it wasn't just about breadcrumbs. That's an issue I hit on, which proved to be very, very popular with the audience. What do you mean? This was some kind of debate about food you It was having. a debate about food, and it was Why about... Why were you on as an expert on food? Well, because I am. I'm recognised as that. And, so and... now you've been, what, an expert on, what is it, badgers? You've been an expert on food. You've obesity. Been expert, obesity. Yes. Uh, an expert on transport, I think. Uh, transport, definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I have a wide range of interests in life. Now, yeah. what I'm saying is, do you remember that time you went to the restaurant where they serve you food in the dark? Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, me, it was just know. an experience. I well, mean, I wouldn't recommend anybody exactly, do it more than exactly, once. Exactly. But it was quite good fun. So, so these days, to try and attract... Who you go with as well. Yeah, to try and attract um, uh, clientele, they serve... Well, you've heard the one about serving food on a shovel hey? in rural restaurants. They a shovel? On a shovel. Oh, I haven't heard about that. Honest to God. They, they, well, they like serve... A, like on, a, on an actual garden shovel? On a garden shovel. Really? Honest well, to God. Where does the handle go? Well, it goes to the side like this. It's, you know what they do is they, they cut the handle off about a foot uh, along, you see right. what I mean? Yeah. But it's served on a shovel. The shovel That's is ridiculous. your plate. On, I'm not joking, right? Bread is served in a flat cap. What? In a flat Where cap. Where are they doing all this rubbish? In, in restaurants all over the country. Really? And so what happened was they started in a debate about, mm. you know, wouldn't you just like your... Fir- now, is it, some, isn't that just a gimmick, though? Some restaurants now, Mike, they come along and they just put the food on the table. Mm. You know, we've got they've got paper um, tablecloths. You know yeah, what I mean. Right. So what I had the rant about was, I said, look, I said, well, it I, saves on the washing up, I suppose. Well, it's it's ludicrous, but the, the the one of the main complaints, and I had this down in Portsmouth, you mm. know, quite recently, fish and chips, please. Yeah. And it came on a wooden slab. Right. And not even a, a wooden plate, a yeah. wooden slab, like a plank, like a plank. Yeah. And it was a, it was about. Yeah, I've, I've seen that in restaurants. Yeah, about ten inches wide, but it's, yeah. a, but it's only four inches across. Yeah. So your balancing act is your fish and your chips yeah. on there falling all over the right. table. It's so off-putting. Mm. I can. I don't mind it. It depends on on the situation. Nope. And did they nope. have the? Did they have like the little tin of chips? Yes, you know, yeah. chips in a tin. Well, funny enough, they had a little wire basket of chips. Yeah, so a little wire basket. They all went cold. Yeah, it's either a wire basket yeah, or a little tin. Because I was in a pub, funny enough, mm. on Saturday mm. down in Dorset, a beautiful yes. pub yes. Uh, called the Anchor Inn down in Sea Town. Right. Been there. No. Uh, it's really gorgeous. Sounds it's very right nice. On, right on the beach. Mm. And I had a shepherd's pie, right. which was made actually with roast lamb, which was beautiful. Yes. But it came in a little kind of earthenware single pot. Pot, yeah. And then they had some broccoli on the side in yes. a little, little basket. And that was served on a, a, on a wooden tray. Yeah, OK. Yeah, that was fine. fine. I didn't mind that. All right, that was on a wooden tray, but at least your, your uh, shepherd's pie was in the basket. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, it was in a, no, a pot. In, 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 a, in the earthenware pot, ye
So when I got onto this show, mm. the show, you know, Jeremy, and I said, look, I said, you know what the worst one is? I said, and, and you'll get a response here from your audience. Yeah. It's putting the bread on the table. Yeah. I said, why do people not give you bread plates anymore? And he said, I don't know. I said, do you know where the, the worst offenders are? They give you, cr- they give you the, the crumbly bread. What's yeah. it called? The uh, cob. You know, the, the yeah. cob to Could eat your soup cob, and yeah. all that. Yeah, you know, yeah. And it's very... It's not crumbly. What's it? Crusty. Yeah, it's, crusty. it's very yeah. crusty. So the minute you break it up, it's all mm. over the table. Right. I said, now, I wouldn't mind that if they had a system where they came away and wiped all the crumbs away yeah. or took away the paper. Why don't you just collect the crumbs and put them in the soup? Uh, because there's so many of them, they right. go all over the table. Yeah. And I said, so the problem is, for the next two hours, yeah. during the time you're having your meal and yeah. having a drink and all that, you're literally sitting amongst this filth of crumbs yeah. and bits of bread all over the right. table that nobody ever cleans Do up. Do you remember those little guys in New York, and sometimes in London... Had little hoovers. Had little hoovers, and yeah. they'd come around and just hoover everything Yeah, up. well, they don't do it here, you see, right. they don't do it. So, so, anyway, I got an immediate response from the audience saying, you're absolutely right. In fact... One very prominent, the wife of one very prominent person rang me up and I thought, who's this? You know, about five minutes after I'd finished the interview, and I didn't recognise the number. rang you personally? Rang me personally. How'd she get your number? Uh, historically, she had it. And said, Historically? Yes. Why, she's no girlfriend of yours or something? No, no, but known her for a few years, you know. Oh, yeah. And she said, oh, my, she said... Oh, your thespian I, friend, is it? Uh, uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> and uh, and she's, she's actually uh, a former beauty queen, actually. Oh, yeah. And uh, she Not said... Trudy. No, it wasn't true, no, no. And she said, um, oh, she said, honestly, such a resonance. She said, I was listening to it with some friends in mm. the car and yeah. all that. And she said, you know, that's the worst bugbear we have, the crusty bread all over the table. Hey, and it goes all over what the a floor. Nightmare. Yeah, she said. And what is she wrong said, with people? She said, it goes all over your dress. Get over you know, yourself, would be and, my and view. And you're brushing it off all over the place. Why can't they just give you a plate? Now, what I did tell the show was, is what I did once, when I was I'm really given... I'm glad I've asked you to uh, repeat yeah, yeah, everything yeah, yeah. you said on this other well, radio well, station. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm now... Not do it slightly more with more brevity. No, no, I'm doing it for the benefit of our audience. What I did say was, what I did say was, why are you hitting your pen? Because I'm trying to emphasise my point. In the restaurant down in Portsmouth, I got mine delivered on a slab of wood, Uh and I noticed other people had it. So I went and got a petition up, and said, "Are you enjoying your fish and chips on that wooden plate?" This was in the restaurant in Portsmouth. All right. Well, weather, not a weather spoon. Sorry, was it a weather spoon? Definitely not a weather spoon. No. It's a classy restaurant. Okay. And 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 they said um, no. Actually, we'd prefer on a plate. I said so would I. Mm. I said no. Went to another table. Are you doing your fish and chips on that bit of wood? No. Right. Okay. Were you there on your own? I was there on my own. So I went to see. Well, then I just chuck you out. I no, just no, chuck you no. out. No, I went to see the manager who, who was who lost. was who was a foreign chap, right? Foreign uh-huh. chap. Yeah, very nice chap. Uh, um, continental. Yeah. And continental. I said look. We don't like the fish. I said, to start off with, it's unhealthy. How do you clean these, these wooden mm. um, bits of... I said, they contain well, it's germs. It's like a chopping pool, isn't it? Yeah, they contain germs. Yeah. You'd never get rid of them. And secondly, why can't we have plates? Yeah. He said, we don't have any plates. I said, well, get some. He's Russian, is he? No, no, he was, uh, he's French, actually. Oh. Uh, we do not have any have plates. plates. We do not have the plates. <laughs> and I said, well, you better get some, because yeah. if you don't, none of us are coming back here again. Is right. that right, people? Yeah. Yes, yes, you know, so I led, the, I led the complaint. What a nightmare. And believe it or not, I'm not joking, next time I went there, mm. they got rid of all the wood and the plates were back. Really? Yeah, so it was a campaign triumph. that worked. That's the only campaign oh, yes. that's ever worked for you. No, no, it's not. No, 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 no. Well played. Uh, Mike yes. Porky Perry, well coming to a plated, restaurant. Well plated, you mean? Uh, well, well plated. Coming to a Thank restaurant you. near you, if he comes in, uh, yes. just leave immediately. This is Talk Sport, coming up, it's time for Winners and Losers. Drive on Talk Sport, the UK's only sports dedicated drive time with Sky Sports. The sharpest analysis on all the day's action. To say I'm angry is an understatement. Laser guided comment and rapid reaction from a nation of sports fanatics. I don't like listening to them, I'll turn off. Drive home with Darren Goff and Adrian Durham. Weekday afternoons from four on Talk Sport with Sky Sports. The home of the Barclays Premier League for the next four seasons. This is the unique go-kart feeling of a turbocharged Mini Cooper five-door hatch. And this is how it feels knowing that you got it for just £189 a month plus initial rental. Book a test drive at your nearest Mini Centre or mini.co.uk forward slash turbo. 48-month hire agreement from Mini Financial Services, £2,899 initial rental. Subject to status, guarantees may be required. Available for new vehicles ordered by 31st of December and registered by 31st of March. Participating retailers only. Mileage and other conditions apply when you return the vehicle. Visit mini.co.uk forward slash turbo. 
Vice called Halo 5 Guardians spectacular. Eurogamer named it the best sci-fi first-person shooter campaign in the business. And official Xbox magazine called it one incredible game. Join the greatest hunt in gaming history. Buy Halo 5 Guardians at Tesco only today for £30 when you buy selected Xbox Live cards and subs. Tesco. Every. Helps. Peggy 16. Terms and conditions apply. Meet Pete, our headline act tonight. His stage, an 18-wheeled Arctic chock full of parcels for next day delivery. And Pete always delivers. Always. So whilst everyone sleeps, Pete munches miles. Munch, munch, munch. And as long as he does, he knows McDonald's are there with a Big Mac coffee and a hefty helping of friendly faces. Serving times apply, but with over 500 restaurants open 24 hours. If you're awake, we're awake. There's a person who can spot threats in the sky before they become threats. They can reassemble a pistol in 15 seconds and maintain equipment so advanced most don't even know it exists. That person's you. There are more than 50 roles to choose from in the RAF. You'll receive world-class training to develop new and existing skills. And you can do it full-time as a regular or in your spare time as a reserve. Find your role in the RAF. Search RAF Recruitment now. Because road conditions change in a second, BMW's intelligent four-wheel drive switches power from rear to front wheels in just one-tenth of a second. From rear to front. From front to rear. From rear to front. Delivering grip that's almost magnetic. X-Drive. Available on models across the range, including sports hatch, saloon, coupe and touring. To find out more, visit your local BMW center. Every weekday from 10 a.m., Colin Moonraker Mary and his host of Evil Henchman blast off on a hairy chested morning mission to bring you the best sporting guests and opinion on the radio. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Murray. I expect you to talk sport. Now, pay attention, Tumblr 7. Adjust your radio frequency transceiver to 1089 and 1053 AM or digitally log onto the signal on DAB. Colin Murray, for your ears only. Weekday mornings from 10, only on sport. Talk sport. And now it's time for the winners and losers. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yes. Why are you humming? Uh, I was just. Uh, I'm. I'm. Because uh, I've got. The, I've, I'm going to win tonight. Definitely. Well, you see, unfortunately, what you've done, rather mm-hmm. like last. Remember last week when you retweeted the uh, the, the 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 voting process, yes. right? Which meant that I won by one retweet. No, that's not true. That's what happened, right? Mm. So this week, I think you've made another classic blunder. Oh right? yes. Another schoolboy error. You've allowed me to go first. Yes. Thereby nabbing all the best winners and losers. Well, you think so, but um, I see, don't. See, I've always said to you yeah. to go first as a matter of courtesy, and, and I thought you would actually accept it. But anyway, so now I'm going to go first right. because Porky somehow thinks that whatever is said last yes. remains in the brain and the subconscious longer. Yes. Right? Uh, and of course, as ever, we will be putting out uh, the uh, voting uh, scenario uh, in about ten minutes' time we finish. finished. Mm. You this week will be retweeted. I this week will be favourited, OK? Yes, OK. Now, my first winner of the weekend... No, hang on, that's not right. Yes, it is. It's my turn to no, go favourite. No, it's not. You, you remember, sure? I won it by getting retweeted last weekend oh, okay. because, you, because you retweeted me and I won. OK. Now, I have to say mm. um, that the, the, these winners are by far and away sort of unassailable and yes. very obvious, you might say. Jamie Vardy yes. is my first one. He okay. is now the top scorer in the Premier League. Okay. Papers this morning are starting to say that he he may well leave Leicester at the end of the season mm. because there's going to be a lot of big clubs coming in for him. It's extraordinary. Bit unfair, playing, that, I playing think. Playing for Leicester, yes. here's a guy who's now got ten Premier League goals, four yeah. more than his nearest rivals, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Sergio Aguero's in yeah. there. There's all kinds of, you know, stellar names in there. Mm. But he, Jamie Varley, has absolutely done brilliantly, right? Yes. And I'm going to say that he is my uh, my top number one winner of the weekend, I'd have okay. to say. Uh, because when you look at Alexis Sanchez, you look at uh, Wijnaldum from yes. Newcastle United, uh, all on six, he's got ten. I think that's absolutely brilliant. My yeah, second yeah, winner yeah, yeah, of yeah. the weekend mm-hmm. has to be, of course, Lewis Hamilton. The guy who's won yet another world championship okay. Okay. is being tipped uh, on uh, the back of one of the papers this morning by uh, Nigel Mansell to actually uh, possibly overtake Michael Schumacher, yeah. uh, who's obviously got seven world championships. Yeah. And also, I'm going to make him a winner because apparently he's ditched his kind of goody-two-shoes lifestyle mm-hmm. uh, and spent the night partying 
uh, and he says James Hunt style. Yes. So you can take that uh, as you will, uh, which involved, he says, both women and drink. Mm. So at least he's beginning to show himself as uh, something of an interesting character. Yes, And yes. finally, Australia. Mm-hmm. Australia, who I tipped at the very beginning of the World Cup after they beat uh, England. Yes. I said to myself, you know, this is a team uh, that are going to go all the way, and mm. I think they might even beat the All Blacks, so I'm going to have yep. them uh, yep. as my three winners. OK. What do you think of those? Um, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. That's very, very high praise from you. But mine are better. Well, do you want to hear your, you want to hear your winners then? Yeah, my winners are coming up right yeah, now, OK? Now, you said you had an obvious winner in uh, Jamie Vardy, yes. right? I'm going to say I've got an even more obvious winner, yeah. but a very, very justifiable one in yeah. Harry Kane. Harry Kane. Because everybody had written off Harry Kane as yeah. a one-season wonder, yeah. only got one goal up to the season now, and then goes and gets a hat-trick, his first ever hat-trick for Spurs. You can't have a bigger winner than that, OK? okay. All right. Now, you had another obvious winner. You mm. had Lewis Hamilton, OK? I did, yes. I've been a bit more clever. Have you? I've been a bit more clever. Well, you've had a lot more time. I've, I've been a bit more clever. Well, I don't drive around in old jalopies that break down all over the place. But I've been a That's bit more clever... Don't go anywhere. ...because... Um, although Lewis Hamilton has won his three world champions, and of course he has, yeah. nothing could have happened if his father, this is Lewis Hamilton's dad, yeah. had not sacrificed almost his whole life to give Lewis Hamilton the start he got, both mm. in karting and then in junior racing, yeah. when at one time he had three separate jobs, right? Yeah. He had a job working in a cafe in the morning, serving tea and butties and toast and all that. He had a job during the day in a, a retail outfit, and at night he went and cleaned offices, all to raise the money yeah. to buy Lewis Hamilton his first car. That, to me, makes him an even bigger winner than his son Lewis Hamilton, because it wouldn't have happened without him, right? Well, you could have said that any time, though. No, 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 no. Why because is he he's suddenly a bigger winner now? Because he invested his time, his money, his energy and his hope in his son becoming something special. His son has now become something very special, uh-huh. a three times winner of the Formula One world uh-huh. champion. And my third winner... You knew winner... they fell out as well, though, right? Sorry? You know they fell out well. That's, well, that's even more to the credit of his father, who's never spoken a bad word against his son. And now his son said today, I couldn't have done this without my dad, who, who made so many sacrifices for mm-hmm. me. Tremendous tribute to a man right. who clearly loved his son so much. Yeah. And the third winner is Jonathan Moss. Jonathan Moss? Jonathan Moss. Not Jonathan Ross. No, Jonathan Moss is the referee who told Jose Mourinho... Mm. Get out of the tunnel and get up in the director's box. You are banned from the technical area. So that okay? makes him a winner. That makes him a winner because he wouldn't take any message from Jose Mourinho, mm. thought he was running the place. And he said, I'm not taking this from you, Mr Mourinho. You yeah. can't speak to me like that. I know we're in the tunnel, but it doesn't matter. Your abuse is too much for me to bear. You are banned from the bench. Go up in the director's box. So those, in my view, I commend to the yeah. house. Harry Kane, I think Patrick we're going to we're gonna have to disqualify you. Lewis, Lewis Hamilton's dad and the referee, Jonathan Moss. We're to disqualify you and me, actually, because we've, we've done the winners in the wrong order. What are you about? We're supposed to start with the losers. It does not matter. Yeah, we've it does. done the winners. No, we've done the winners in the wrong order. What are you on about, you idiot? Well, we play even the losers by Tom Petty, and then we do the losers, but we did the winners first. Well, you're an idiot because you went first well, you and you did the wrong me. one. You didn't correct me. You're, you're, you're a complete idiot. Well, we'll have to just swap it round. Now we'll have to play the losers. Uh, now we have to do the losers to the winners. Music. The winners, okay. We have the winners' music for the losers. See, you're not paying attention. Yes, I am. That's right. what's going on. Right, go on. That's what's going on. on. OK, my first loser yeah, yeah. of the weekend. Now, mm. there are so, those who would say this is unfair, and this may cost me, because whenever I say anything against okay. Manchester United, okay. I get a big wave of anti-Manchester kind of okay. uh, uh, Manchester United feeling coming my way. Yeah. Uh, Wayne Rooney uh, is my first loser well, of the weekend. Well, that is just too obvious. Because, no, not too obvious. Yeah, yeah. Not, be, not because he didn't have a great game, but because, and we talked about this last Friday, if you remember, to Gordon Hill, yes. should he start in the Manchester derby, mm. do you remember? Yes. And Gordon Hill said, no, yes. he shouldn't, right? Yes. Now, the Manchester United fans, mm. after the game, have apparently petitioned Manchester United to say yes. they don't want him to start anymore for Manchester United. Yes, so, right, in yeah. fact, I was very yeah. much leading that, mm. uh, saying that that's what the fans would think. So he's my first loser of the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, my second loser is Micah Richards, uh, who behaved like a complete plank over the weekend. Micah Richards. Uh, and he now looks like he's going to be facing yet another mm-hmm. uh, FA charge after some kind of clash in the tunnel yeah. uh, with Swansea's Federico Fernandes. I mean, he's bad enough that yes. Ashford would have lost their manager. Yes. Now they're going to lose this guy. He's the only guy that's played in every single game mm-hmm. that Tim Sherwood has actually managed this season. Yes, right? yeah. So bad, bad news for him, behaving very, very badly. And my final mm. uh, loser of mm. the weekend is actually you. 
Because what? once again, you left me a disgraceful, ghastly note on my car yes. on Friday morning. Uh, how do you know it was me? Uh, because it was written in your handwriting and because it said, mm. you wanted a war, now you're going to get one. Well, I... And it said, MG uh, is a disgraceful gerrymandering cheat, or worse to that effect. It was written in exactly the same handwriting as all the other notes that you mm. left on my cars. And for being such a bad loser... Mm. And not doing well enough at the quiz because yeah. you didn't research the yeah. subject enough. Yeah. I'm making you the biggest loser of the week. How do you know it wasn't uh, an enthusiastic fan who was supporting uh, no. me? We now have three notes, right, all of which have been tweeted out, all mm. of which are written in the same handwriting, mm. in two of which you identify yourself. Right, OK. So those are my three losers of the weekend. Right. Well, I've got three much, much better losers. Have you? Right, OK. And listen up here, folks, please, because I'm going to win this competition. These are quality losers, OK? The first one is... Quality Nick- losers. Yeah, the, the first one is Nicky Rosberg, OK? Oh, yeah. So they're, uh, they're Lewis Hamilton, absolute hero, wins his third um, uh, world championship. Mm. Uh, he then chucks the he was sponsor's joking. hat... He was joking. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he, he chucks was. the sponsor's hat to Nicky Rosberg, his teammate he was in joking. the Mercedes team, yeah, yeah. who picks it up and flings it back at the new world champion. That was a disgraceful act of, of Not mean-mindedness. At Not at all. Because all that, all that Lewis Hamilton did was drive more cleverly than him at the first bend and force him wide and take the lead. And then later on, it wasn't uh, Lewis Hamilton's fault that R- Rosberg ran his ca- own car off the track. And, and let Hamilton through. So he's, he's a big but, loser. But Nico Rosberg does that every time they race the, together. The, he always pretends that he's upset with him, but no, it's, they always no, make it no, up. No, he, he was bitterly upset and he wouldn't smile, he didn't pat him on the back, he didn't anything. He was a terrible, no, terrible loser. No, they shook hands. They shook hands. No, they didn't. They did. They didn't. He was a terrible loser. The second loser, and I thought this is so funny, Steve Evans, I told you about last week, the new Leeds manager, yes. who's a small, fat guy... And believe it or not, Lady Brady, Karen Why do you Brady. Keep calling him a small fat guy. Well, he is. But but but. but well, so are you? But he doesn't call you that. Well, all I was going to say was that Lady Brady, Karen Brady, yeah. writes a column in a national newspaper every Saturday morning. And she said, and I don't know why she said it, but I tweeted out on a Saturday morning. So in the end, it came down to Leeds appointing a new manager, a small fat man. In a poncho. That's no, it's not very, a poncho. What was it? Very well, what's that hat called? The Mexicans wear sombrero. Yeah, a small fat man in is a sombrero. No, she actually why said would, that. Why would she be so? Uh, why are you so anti? And why is well, she? Well, I don't know. But what's what she done to her? What I'm saying is to be described in any form as 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 a a small fat guy in a sombrero by somebody who is a leading light of a of a of a distinctive uh, Premier League club, which is now third in the Premier League. Mm. It's a shocking, um, you know, shocking reflection on... But there must the... be some bad blood there, surely. No, no, I don't think there's bad blood. The shock reflection on the sort of image Steve Evans now has within mm. the world of football. But my third loser, and this is the best of the lot, right. the absolute best of the lot, is Marianne Fellaini. Ah. For... Marouane? Marouane Fellaini. You had him the other week. No, no, no. Yeah, he did. No, it got worse. It gets worse. I had him last week because he was in a restaurant, right, mm. when he was ignored round yeah. me by a load of fans right. who went rushing round to talk to an so ex snooker two player, in a row. John Virgo. But get this. Even after losing it last week. No, get this. Get this. Guess what's happened this week? What's happened this week? There was a report in a Sunday newspaper that after meeting a young lady very briefly, it is alleged that Maro yeah. started sending her pictures because he got her phone number. Uh-huh. And the pictures were... Intimate pictures. Right. And so this poor young lady who had never um, well, really... Well, she, she gave her phone number not expecting this. Well, what well, what I'm saying is this poor young lady was out for dinner mm. the following night yeah. when all of a sudden ping <laughs> on, on, on her... Transmission on, fault. On her, on her mobile phone yeah. appeared a picture of the genitalia region of Marilyn Fellaini's body, I allegedly. This, I, hope this allegedly. I hope this wasn't like while the, uh, the waiter was looking over his shoulder. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But what would you like but, for dessert, but, madam? Yes, that's right, yeah. Now, allegedly, I keep saying... This is a bit of an old story, isn't it's it? It's not. No, it was, in the, it was in one of the Sunday papers. Oh, yeah. the, 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 the lady then said, I don't know really why I know he did. Didn't give an encouragement. I have not responded. Mm. And, and actually, if somebody could get the message to him to please stop sending these pictures, <laughs> because the other old penicle structure and scrotum bag type um, <laughs> arrangement, you know, Mara Fellaini's uh, most intimate part, yeah. is not something you really want to be, um, you know, looking at when sure you're just about to his... start your strawberry sure, sure uh, plan. Of, sure it wasn't a picture of his head he was sending. Well, no, I don't think so, no. from the way it was described. As I say, it's an allegation in a Sunday newspaper. Yeah, could be I, untrue. I haven't, I haven't seen... Uh, but you're just bitter about him I because seen he went to Manchester United. Response to it. No, no I'm not bitter at all. Well, how can you get him in twice in the same... Well, you know, we, well, week? Because this week... 
week's is worse than last week's. Right. You see what I mean? Well, I'll tell you what. Mm. Uh, it is now time for voting, of course. I will now send Ace out... Fellini sexed a girl fan while he was taking a sickie. He was supposed to be off training because he wasn't very well. Superstar footballer Marouane Fellini sent a string of sex texts to a fan <laughs> while he was sick from... Well, he was off sick from Manchester United. Supposedly. That is... According, that is, is you according know. to this woman, anyway. Who knows if it's even true? Absolutely. I can't believe. I can't believe that you're using this for two weeks in a row. Well, that's loser territory, man. Well, it may well be, but I'm not sure it's any good. Uh, if you retweet for a Porky this week, you mm. can uh, favourite for me this week. The, the Two Mike's uh, Twitter account has just tweeted it out. Uh, you've got until midnight tonight to vote. Yes. And uh, we shall see. Uh, may the better man win. This is Talk Sport. Vote Porky, vote often. Talk Sport. Striving to identify the killer pass. Yeah. Talky quiz this week, which is going to be on Isambard Kingdom Brunel. Yes. Uh, a, a story. A, a, a great a, British hero. A great British hero uh, and, a, and a subject of which... Uh, Built which the Porky Great Eastern. He is very, very expert in. Now, uh, quite a few tweets have come in already on the winners and losers front. Good. Uh, there's a text here from a guy who doesn't give his name except yes. for Reading. Yes. Uh, he says it's actually Harry Kane's second hat trick for Spurs, not his first. He scored a hat trick against Leicester mm. last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's one from Matt who says, Paul Key wrong as usual. Season. It's not Harry Kane's first Spurs hat trick. I hat-trick. knew that. He got two last season. I knew uh, that. And here's one that. from uh, Scottish mm. Bully who says, How can Hamilton's dad be a winner? Mm. He never speaks to his son Lewis anymore. Fact, Rubbish. Uh, he must be a loser. No. Nope. Uh, Mark says, uh, it's actually Harry Kane's uh, second hat trick. Yes, I and said Carl that. says, after current form, winners and losers should be called winners and parry. No, 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 no. And Nick my, says, my, my I can't wait for Mike Parry's weekly review mm. of the Jeremy Vine show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, yeah, well, I'll let you know what's coming next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so and Kieran thinking. says this, intercepted mm. with three mm. seconds left to end the ball game. Unbelievable to the NFL game 26-18 Arizona. Arizona did end up beating the, uh, uh, the, uh, the other team there. But uh, never mind. Now, we've got lots more to do. Here's one from uh, uh, mm. Sean Lecab in Blackheath, yeah. uh, who says this. I didn't tell you, by the way, the final ignominy of when I was driving in tonight. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. right? I mean, I know that you're fed up with this story about... Final so. ignominy. Well, then. after having, you know, mean? traversed the southeast of the country trying to get round the closure on the M25, yeah. I had about ten minutes to get here in time to be able to do the handover on the mm. sports bar, right? Mm. And I was coming down... You know you come down the bottom of Shooter's Hill in Blackheath? I do. And then you come into Deptford, and yes. there's some traffic lights. And my apologies to Steve in Darlington, if you don't know where Deptford is, yeah. or if you don't know where Blackheath is. Yeah. Believe me, really, mate, you're better off in Darlington. You should really find out. There's a right mm. turn, there's a filter light, right? Yes. Which takes me in... Around all the terrible roadworks around the Elephant Castle, right. which could delay you by 20 minutes. And I thought, I'll come in on Jamaica Road. Mm. But you know what happened? The woman who was in front of me in mm. the lane to turn right yeah. suddenly puts her flashes on, right, just she as the light down. turns green, and gets out of the car. And Why? just opens the door. Why? And I'm, and I'm like, shouting at her, going, what are you doing? Mm. She's like, oh, my car's broken down. Oh, my God. I'm like, are you having a laugh? Mm. You know, I'm sitting there trying to get to work. Did you get out as a gentleman and try no. and help her? No, I immediately well, uh, threw the car into reverse, How... went around her into into the lane, the lane which How was, can you which leave a woman just, stranded like just that? Just turning green, because mm. I had to get to work, that's mm. why. Mm. May I remind you of the time that you uh, refused to help that uh, old gentleman who had a flat tyre and instead ran off pretending that he had some prior engagement? Oh, yeah, but that was his fault. He, he, that was his fault. He'd organised organized his day badly. He should have checked his tyres the night before, so he, he, he wouldn't have had to panic and uh, change them the following morning. Mm. That's what I always do. Now, here's one from Joshua who mm. says, uh, Porky, it's not on it was in one of the Sunday's papers. It, mm. It's not on it was in one of the Sunday papers. How many Sundays are there? I think he's just uh, confused about how you said that. No, 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 it was you in a Sunday said on, newspaper. You said, I, think, but I think you said on one of the Sunday newspapers. And All right, well, it was in then, wasn't it? I mean, so you know, most of, the ti- most of the time I'm on air, on radio, yeah. so when I confuse an on with an in, it's because my first profession, at which I was very successful, uh, sometimes masks my mind in my second profession, in which I've also been very successful. Yeah. Uh, Bill says, uh, what's all this about Mary Ann Fellaini and his pedicle structure? Uh, it sounds like a <laughs> transgender documentary, Porky. <laughs> you plank. Oh, dear. Well, uh, I mean, how do you put these things politely? You I know, know it's I mean? not easy, mm, is it? Mm. Uh, and here's one from Becky who says, mm. uh, MG gets my vote despite nearly blowing it back into Wallabies. Porky overdid the Jose and Fellini stories. No, it didn't. I tried to take them as accurately as I possibly could. Now, I could give you a snapshot of what how it's going yeah, so go far. Yeah. Uh, 26 retweets, 37 favourites. So... So it's quite close. Uh, You're being retweeted, as I, in case you need to be reminded. Oh, right, OK, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, OK, well, that'll leave itself up. Don't worry about that well, one. I'm sure it will. Once, but you see, people digest it and they think, now, let me just think, who had the more intelligent approach to that? Who actually... Well, you actually got Harry Kane wrong. Uh, who actually was... You've no, got, I did not. You've got Lewis not. Hamilton's dad, who doesn't speak to him. Uh, uh, right? Rubbish, he does speak to him. Now, 
How about this? I didn't read this out from Sean Cabin Blackheath. Right. Uh, Ray, the police taking cars with no insurance. He's got some information for you here. Oh, he says, yes. Actually, what they do mm. is seize the car on the spot. If you stop for no insurance, they seize the car there mm. and then. They always drive about in pairs, so when a car is seized for whatever reason, yeah. then one of them drives it to the pound and the other one follows it in the police car. Is that right? He says, watch police interceptors on Channel 5. They do it all the time on that show. Um, yeah, but surely, Sean, they can't just... If they stop you mm. and there's some mistake, a mm. clerical error, yeah. because the DVLA hasn't updated its website, they can't just take your car off you. Well, hang on, hang there on, must be, there, hang there, on. It must be a pro- Since uh, when has the DVLA had records of, sh- of car insurance? Well, the DVLA will tell uh, anybody who goes onto their website whether the car's insured or not. No, they won't. Yeah, they uh, will. How can they well, do they that? Have, but the police have got access to their computer. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, when I arrange my insurance policy, yeah. I arrange it between me and the insurance yeah, company. Yeah, the insurance company will in, then inform the DVLA. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I didn't know that. Yeah, I thought I, I so. thought the DVLA had um, records of cars that were taxed or not taxed. Yeah. And ownership records yeah. of, of who you know who who are you car yeah. owner or the car keeper? I'm pretty, or, sure, or I'm pretty sure they've I got that I as well. I didn't think they had insurance records. Well, who they? else would hold the insurance then? Nobody. And I well, think why I... would the police then stop a car that was supposedly driving without insurance, without any knowledge? Because they they, they it's a spot check. It, literally, you know, they check the lights, the tires, all that. No, no, insurance, no. Uh... No, no. They pull people over on the grounds that they check the number plate and they realise that it hasn't been insured. And so yeah. they'll pull the car over, so they'll get the information from somewhere. Yeah, I think that must be true, because otherwise, otherwise, the driver said, well, my insurance documents are at home. Yeah. The police couldn't seize the car. Well, in the that. old days, what they used to do was yeah. you've got seven days that's to right, produce to your documents. Yeah, exactly, you? yeah, that's right. Yeah. The police, but I suppose they can't do that anymore, because the police station's never open. No, there are no police stations anymore. <laughs> Not that I can... No, I mean... Uh, it's true. Uh, you go down in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey, in every well, little town you go through... Here's the thing for you. Uh, the, the police station's closed with a, with a, a stupid little phone on the front yeah. saying... Would you, you know, like to call the police? If you're about to be murdered yeah. by... A thug who's wielding a knife at you, just yeah. get on this phone here and we'll we'll see you in about 48 yeah. hours. Well, how about this, right? Mm. I mean, to be parked in a lay-by for mm. three hours, yes. right, um, you know... No for, police will ever stop. No, nobody stopped. No. Nobody sort of came in to go, is everything all right? No. You didn't actually see a police car on the A31 no. the whole time we were there. Is that amazing? That's amazing, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't know yeah. what they've been doing, but, I mean, there's no highway patrol, there's no, no um, you know, that high, what do they call those highway traffic officers and all that? Oh, yeah. Surely uh, you would think, if they've got everything on CCTV... Highway maintenance. Well, not just highway maintenance, but they've got those traffic police now. Yeah, traffic they, uh, officers. What do they do, by the well, way? Well, I think they just check people for speeding. I don't, no, they don't. They've got no uh, jurisdiction whatsoever, and I know that because quite often when I see I've, one... Well, I saw them pulling somebody over tonight. Oh, uh, well, I don't know what that was for, but I always speak Traffic past officer. them. Traffic officer. Traf- no, they haven't got any jurisdiction over speed well, or anything like that. I'm not no sure, way. but all I can say is... is I mean, mm. imagine if there was something horrendous going on yes. in a car yes. for three hours parked in one spot. Yeah, yeah. Would you not then want somebody to investigate it? Well, you would think that they would. Mm. Seriously, you would think that they would. I think that's a damn disgrace. No, I no. Have to say. Absolutely shocking. Now, don't forget, uh, coming up for the rest of this week, we've got Porky yes. Vision, of course, on Wednesday night. Tomorrow uh, it's... Uh, tomorrow it's Ask Porky. Ask Porky, and yeah. I will help you with your problems and change your life. That's mm. what I'm here for, you know, yeah. to uh, to serve. And what are you doing for uh, uh, the rest of the uh, the week? Is there anything, any, pro- any solo projects you want to tell me solo about now? projects. Any radio shows you might be doing? Solo I don't know, projects. Anything on the stage? Uh, you haven't let me know. But you haven't really told us about what happened at the Emirates, by the way. At the Emirates? Yeah, you haven't really what told you us. Well, well, you know what happened? Everything got well, beaten 2-1. Yeah, but you first ran game. into John Cross, right? Oh, I did, yeah. Outside Johnny Cross, yeah. Corner. I saw that. Yeah. And a lot of people said, why do we never see any pictures of the inside of Porky's visits to these places? What do you mean? Well, people like to... I mean, I tweet stuff out all the time. Uh, I'm not, I'm not and a... You, you don't like to do it. I'm not a... People give you a hard time for that. I'm not a stargazer, you know, I don't go around my picture taking with famous people. I'm not talking about... I don't send stuff, pictures you know of myself I mean? out, but I send out pictures yes. of where I was. Well... For example, you know, I sent out a nice picture of Weymouth Beach. Yeah, sent but... sent out a lovely picture I of think... the... Uh, um, the the sea town where I went for a, a pub lunch on a Sunday. I think if somebody invites you into their box for the afternoon, it's a private enclave, and you don't go around taking pictures of it and send them well, out. Well, why to the not world. take a picture of inside the stadium or something? Well, why? Not because to... people like to see that you're there. Why? I have to, I'm sorry to say because some people don't believe you're there. Oh, rubbish! I That's mean, true. Every everyone who's been to the uh, Emirates knows what the inside of the Emirates looks like. Yeah, well, some people haven't been to the inside of the Emirates, so they want to see it. Why? Why one of them? Well, um, if you've led that sheltered life, I can't really help you there, Mike. But, I mean, you know, I've well, tried to introduce of, you to some of these people. Talking of leading a sheltered life, right? You have an impression, right? I have to say. Mm. Here's, here's uh, one from mm. Des. He says, yes. uh, how do you think you can tax your car online if DVLA don't have details of insurance? I don't know. I don't know Well, you can't, one. can you? Because they, they do. Is that right? Uh, and here's one from Max, who says, was the restaurant serving the bread on the plank run by Old Woodenhead? 
Well, it might have been because I it mean, was tweeted that's, that's a few times today. Yeah, quite right. Funnily enough, talking of bread and uh, planks and yeah. that sort of thing, have you ever seen that thing they do where they serve? I used to go to a pub in uh, Winchelsea. Oh yes, uh, which is down oh, is towards that? down towards Rye, beautiful part of the world. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Where Spike Milligan is uh, buried. In Winchelsea. Is he? Yes, yeah, okay. Um, I told you I wasn't well. I told you I wasn't well. Yeah, the inscription on his grave. And um, uh, they serve the soup actually inside a loaf of bread. Yes, I've seen that I've happen. Seen that? And the, the other thing I object to enormously you object is, to that. is serve. Yeah, he's serving a whole Sunday roast meal inside a giant Yorkshire pudding. Yeah, that I've seen as well. As soon as it goes flabby and the gravy's got it, it's all over the place. Yeah. Hopeless. Yeah, it's not good. No. Now, we appear to be out of time. Uh, yeah, so, uh, we've got Ask Porky coming up tomorrow at yeah. 1 o'clock. Uh, yeah. We've got lots of busy things to be getting on with. Uh, as I said, the Arizona Cardinals ended up winning the uh, mm. NFL. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Parry. I hope you'll be a bit more sympathetic towards me tomorrow night if there's any more car trouble. I've been very sympathetic to you tonight. You know, I haven't told half the, um, I haven't told the audience half of the incompetence that you managed to get yourself through in the last 72 hours to find yourself on a in, a, in an old I jalopy, think, broken think, down in a I lay-by, think, stranded for hours, your children distressed. I think I should be praised for being a your children I think at I should a be wit's praised, end. Praised for being a hero and your dog going mad. Dog has gone mad, but. Uh, you he was a little bit upset, I have to say. Uh, anything worse than being trapped on the uh, A31 for three hours would be trapped with you for three hours. If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053am and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. Yeah, I've got a chief duck. Look at the light!